So like, yeah, we we could do the weekly Picard podcast, but my check still hasn't <laughs> twice come in. a week. Well, my check oh, still really? hasn't come in from the uh, from the Stargate stuff. Um, you and... gotta go to have yours as your Discovery one came in your Star Trek Discovery. It, it has yeah, an SJW I, I did get in my, the memo. Yeah, I got my STD. Okay, yeah, your your SJW. Oh shit! STD. Hello there, everyone. Oh, so we're live. Okay. Uh, yeah. So sorry. That's uh. I just ignore that, guys. That's confidential. Do yeah. not talk about it. <laughs> So hello there and welcome to Tap Calf Transmissions, our Star Wars book club, book club podcast where we talk about, so far, a bunch of legend stuff. Uh, last week, or not last week, last episode, which was like three weeks ago, we talked about the famous foundational comic book series, Dark Empire. And today we're going to be talking about Dark Empire 2, the sequel comic book series we're going to be talking about all six issues uh with next episode we're going to cover empire's end which kind of concludes the dark empire storylines uh joining me as always is my co-host with the mo host mr justin eckhart's ladder how you doing justin of course you sound like shit i do sound like shit and as you pointed out i am Corey. so uh yeah i'm a little bit sick still uh so okay. we're um, probably going to cut a lot of the in... preamble that we usually do and just talk about Dark yeah. Empire so I don't completely lose my voice. Yeah, so usually, guys, we do a news uh, roundup. We talk about our personal lives. Usually I have Corey a little bit of relationship advice if he's lucky. Um, but today we're probably going to get right into the comic. We've got five, wait six issues, right? Yeah, six uh, issues of Dark Empire 2 to get through. Um so yeah, so we're just probably going to get right into that. Uh, will we read the emails at the end, though, still? Yes, we do have two emails that we've received this week. Uh, if you would like to email us with any questions about either what we're going to talk about right now or for the Empire's End content, which should be next week, we're going to figure out exactly Literally. when that's, yeah, tentative schedule there. Uh, if you want to email us at tapcaftransmissions at gmail.com, that's T-A-P-C-A-F, transmissions, uh, or now... You can even tweet at us at Tapcalf Transmissions on Twitter. Did you make it without the E as well? Is that correct? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm running into a few problems because uh, we chose a really stupid name for our podcast. And um, Twitter is limited to 15 characters. And I think Tapcalf is 16. Tapcalf Transmissions, sorry, I think is like 16. So uh, I'm, I'm struggling right now. Um, All right. So you haven't picked day. it yet. <clears throat> well, I transmissions that should still come up i'll probably retweet it um from my personal twitter account um what about tap just tap like... podcast ladies and gentlemen we have the twitter handle there we go so at tap calf podcast i'm just gonna ch- i'm just gonna do this right now because somebody listening will will claim this before okay we got it we got it we got it we're good all right all right so <laughs> Crisis averted. The <laughs> the Twitter handles ours. We're really good at our jobs, uh, but yeah. So how? Let's just get straight into. It. How did you enjoy Dark Empire two? It's really a a downgrade from Dark Empire one in almost all aspects. Um, the one thing I wasn't expecting, but I really kind of noticed was the art quality i thought went right went down pretty significantly even though it is the same artist it's cam kennedy again um like the the art is one of the most redeeming qualities of dark empire for me um so i was kind of disappointed in how it looked uh otherwise the story is it's kind of it's pretty weird because not a whole lot happens (laughs) in six issues um it there's a lot of retreading um stuff from dark empire one um yeah but you yeah that i kind of had the same impression where there's not a lot that happens there's a lot of stuff that kind of gets introduced but then three pages later max it all goes away uh Mm. and like you get a lot of little individual scenes with certain characters like boba fett shows up a lot but he also does nothing. He's basically just Team Rocket, where he'll show yeah. up. He's like, "Ha! I got you now, Han!" And then he just blasts off again. And it's it's kind of yeah, not great. Yeah. <clears throat> um, 
it is you messaged me this today it does kind of start off in a kind of strange way um we get uh cam sol Yusar being introduced kind of out of the blue um originally it was planned that we'd see the backstory and actually in the audio drama you do get to see the the introduction between cam and luke and cam is still uh, a dark jedi and luke kind of um moves him to the light side so the audio production actually picks up before the uh, dark empire 2 and it, it really helps kind of ma- like it makes more sense that way i guess because it is very abrupt he, he's like oh we got new jedi and then we get literally four more join the club by the end of it um so yeah yeah i i legitimately thought i'd missed something so i spent almost as much time as i spent reading the first issue as I did, just looking for whatever it was I had missed, and then it turned out I had not, in fact, missed anything. Uh, it was just, okay, this this all just happened, and great. Yeah, um, I, I think there was originally more supplementary material planned, uh, but obviously we didn't get a whole lot of that, and it really kind of speaks to the weakness of the comic book medium when telling, I think... Well, not not weakness, but just the different strengths of comic books versus novels. Like the Thrawn trilogy, every single thing is laid out. It's very clean. The continuity is almost perfect. Stuff does happen off screen quite frequently, but it's explained. But in the comic, you know, there's a lot that kind of even like, yeah, there's a lot that just sort of happens and you kind of got to live with it. (laughs) Yeah, but I feel like even uh, Dark Horse and other Star Wars comics has done a much better job than they did here. Uh, oh, yeah, in, like the Thrawn, in the Thrawn comics, in uh, the Rogue Squadron comics, in Legacy. Uh, it's just there. there's a lot that happens that just ends up feeling kind of unnecessary or where if they had just like picked certain things to introduce and not other things, they would have had more time to do the other important stuff. But uh, but yeah. And some of that comes to like behind the scenes stuff too. Like we know that, I don't know if it was Dark Horse... I assume was being a little picky about timing and funding. And I believe that's why Kim Kennedy ended up not uh, being a part of dark empire three or sorry, empire's end. So there's definitely a battle with budget and timing. Um, They're getting a lot of content out relatively quickly. So I imagine some of that can explain Yeah, uh, the pacing issues and the continuity issue. It's not really continuity. It's just, it is more pacing, I guess. Yeah, I I never bothered trying to figure out like which dark Jedi or oh, no. Palpatine associate was which because it, it's all just different silhouettes uh, that yeah. look fairly similar, and then they all just die in one stroke after doing nothing. So whatever. it doesn't help too that like the Other names of dark Emp- like of people in Dark Empire is very kind of eccentric. Like the naming convention is weird. Like we get what Zekker Nist. I don't even know how you say his name. Cedrus, Tendrin Shaw. It's like there's a very specific way that the yeah yeah it, it doesn't help with the confusion because it all is very kind of unique to Dark Empire. So it does kind of get mixed up in my head at least a little bit. Yeah, you get like Nefta and Sadi at the end of the first issue where mm. they're trying to destroy all the Palpatine clones that Luke didn't destroy. And yep. Cedrus walks in and is like, okay, so are these guys Not important? Oh, no, they're, they're one of Palpatine's best friends? He has friends? <laughs> nope, they're dead. Never mind. And then you yeah. get uh, the other two Dark Jedi later on in the series where Palpatine gives them Force powers, and then they yeah, also immediately be... die to uh, rookie Tree. Jedi. Or no, yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah. Cedrus dies to the tree. I don't yeah, think Udnar really... actually needed to sacrifice himself there, but hey, what do I know? Yeah, like he had him tied up. Like Luke probably could have just stabbed him or something, but yeah, no. <clears throat> Everyone else got stabbed or cut in half in like one go. Yeah, I I guess he just he was like, God damn, I'm tired of living. He was just like looking for an excuse. Like he was he was being so dramatic. Like someone forgets to water him one day, and he's like, Guess I'll blow up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've been alive for five thousand goddamn years. Well, I'm then we do go. get the uh, the new Nettie baby Jedi that gets uh, put in the ground there when he blows up, and I'm sure that'll pay off somewhere, right? Right? He'll get mentioned again. 
it's kind of um surprising too speaking of like payoff that the um the dark jedi killing palpatine's clones i'm surprised there's not like crimson empire didn't make a carnor Jax connection with them too because mm-hmm. why not just say that carnor was paying them off and i'd kind of thought that that happened and i went back to check and it no it was only the the doctor that he'd been paying off mm. but like they're killing all the clones the way they do is a little bit contrived um so that would have been some helpful rationale i guess well, Palpatine ended up just on, being obviously. like right around the corner too when this is all yeah. going on. It's like, okay, they, they just not even bother looking. He's like, I can't find my pants. I can't <laughs> confront them yet. Is that why his robe is so big? Yeah. He, Damn, yeah. I think he just uncovered something. Palpatine's genitals. Well, he un- Yeah, he uncovered something in his fight with Luke. <laughs> then he found out uh, any battles where he's hanging dong, he's just like much, much less effective. Um. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So let's start from the beginning, though. Let's let's go let's go to Balmora. I do like the very first panel has a nice victory star destroyer design on it, like the very clear victory, um, because it's got that little With the antenna thing. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was cool. Um, and I guess that's supposed to be it's the Avenger. Is that like the Avenger? Like. The uh, previously known Avenger from the movies. Yeah. Because that, that's Vader's ship, right? Isn't Vader's ship the Avenger? Yeah, I, I don't think it's intended to be to be the same Avenger. I don't think. But I have a I have difficulty telling apart allegiances and ISTs in Dark Empire, so I'm not I'm not a good one to talk to about that. Yeah. Well, it says it says that on the wiki that it was Vader's ship. So, or sorry, not not Vader's ship. That it was the same Avenger. So, mm, maybe. yeah, but I, yeah, I guess maybe that it was intended that way. Maybe not. Vader's is, sorry, like, Vader's is the Devastator, though. I guess the event. I was thinking uh, that Vader's was the Avenger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that the one that gets ion cannoned? Hmm. The one that turns into the Rebel Dream. Oh, there's too many goddamn Star Destroyers. Yeah. Palpatine, what were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Need to do a video talking about all 25,000 of them individually. I did do a video where I tracked down the um, all of the Super Star Destroyers mentioned in Legends. Uh, all the Dreadnoughts of different types, and there's like 60 of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I wonder how many Star Destroyers have actually been properly accounted for. Probably about 300. That's my guess. That's a good guess. That's a good guess. Let's do the over-under at 300. What are you saying? Hard because, like, you know that, like, oh, Marvel comic, like, some Marvel comic names one <laughs> once, or, like, or this random RPG campaign thing mentions one. I'd say over. You're doing over? All right. Yeah, but how do, how do you... So is it just that how many are named somewhere or how many are like we know kind of what happens to them at some point? And just named. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's list them all for the rest of the episode. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll start off with Stormhawk. No, Electo Avenger. Um, we need to start with all the ones that are in the Empire at War name files. <laughs> Um, no, oh my god. I, I don't know if you can hear this. Yeah. Alexa, stop. <laughs> I said Alexa, Alexa name every Star Destroyer. <laughs> okay, well. She's going to be demanding royalties now from appearing on this podcast. Oh, Little shit. does she know the we don't get co-host. paid. <laughs> third co host, Alexa. Uh, anyway, so we get to the Battle of Balmora. Which I actually think is pretty cool. What, what, what are your thoughts on Balmora? I've always found the Balmoran droids to be one of the weirder parts of Dark Empire, which is saying mm-hmm. something. So yeah. between that and between just needing to throw in Captain Veers there, that's all. It's yeah, that part's really never strange. really sat well with me. Uh, I do like yeah. the idea that Veers is like out there somewhere, and this lets him be that 
because he gets mentioned in some other or it's mostly like a, a source book background stuff that he gets mentioned in afterwards but this does mm-hmm. open up the nece- necessity of him to be alive by this point but mm. I, I'm not really going to give Dark Empire credit for allowing other cool things to happen later but it's also supposed to be Veers' son working for the Alliance at this point Zev or whatever his name is hmm it's kind of strange do you think it's a retcon or sorry, do you think it's a mistake that he's called Captain Veers or is it is he intended to have been demoted for some reason? I don't think it was intended to be him. Oh, really? I don't think it was like if I were to put my money down, I would say whoever wrote that wasn't intending it to be General Veers. They just wanted a recognizable name for Imperials and they uh-huh. went with it. He was supposed to, because like everyone else in Star Wars is related. This is just supposed yeah. to be a Veers, and that is just supposed to be like a big Imperial family. That is my. Fair enough. That's not, that's not a bad uh, call. And then it just ended up getting turned into, yeah, that's actually him. Yeah. Uh, okay. That, that, that's definitely possible. Uh, I, I could see that. Uh, but yeah, so the battle, basically, the Empire uh, is trying to take this factory world, um, which was aligned with the Empire, but now that Palpatine's fallen and things are kind of in chaos, they want, uh, they're still into the Alliance, so they want full independence, um, and there's kind of like a trade-off with the first attack, the Empire, who's being led by Cedrus, this this uh, little army is being led by Cedrus, uh, they think that they've got the Balmorans in a trap because they've got these new shadow droids, which I quite like. Um, and then the Balmorans, they've got their own uh, special droid. So it's kind of like a, one thing that this comic series a lot of is like escalating technology. Yeah. And uh, we see a lot of that during this battle. By the way. Yeah, and they, we kind of get uh, that throughout all of dark empire mm-hmm. uh so you can't the pierce their of, shields yeah and it the, there's some dragon ball z level power creep that happens yeah but what what do you think of uh mr cedrus kagalok what's uh what's your take on cedrus i don't know he's got like a bit of cade skywalker to him mm-hmm. <laughs> with like the he's like a very edgy looking um i don't know he's he's fine um so i I don't really feel i have i have a bit of headcanon here where to me cedrus is at least part nagai i mean he does he does look like the nagai have their hair like that he's very yeah i I can see it he looks like a nagai i I like that bit of headcanon like it's supported by absolutely nothing but He's pale enough and edgy enough that he's, yeah, to he's me... He's got the, the hair. He's, he's... he's the guy. Yeah, okay. So for those of you who uh, who didn't read it, Cedrus is basically the new Imperial commander who's kind of in Vader's old position uh, and in Luke's old position. So I don't think he... I don't think he comes up in anything else. No, I mean, that's a lot of Dark Empire. Yeah, but he, he's, um, a, he's a pretty prominent character in Dark Empire. So, like, it kind of makes sense that Zekker Nist doesn't come up really. Well, I mean, he but, feels prominent, but he's killed by what? Issue three. five? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that too. So, I mean, and Dark Empire 2 is, like, the least important of the Dark Empire. So, I mean. But you'd still think, like, a yeah. couple mentions somewhere, maybe. But yeah, but I mean, you'd also think like, yeah, no, I, I do get what you're saying. It it, it is a little odd. Um, so yeah, or even just like kind of a backstory for him to come up like, oh, it's mm-hmm. another one of Luke's seventy three failed apprentices from before. Yeah, when we started the academy. Like I'm surprised like Abo Pina didn't do something like that or. Yeah, like even Pablo, like just in some random hyperspace article or something like that would have been the perfect uh, place to address something like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, good point. Um, 
So do, do you have a, a favorite one of the droids, like Shadow Droid, Viper? Yeah, I, uh, I, I quite like the, the Shadow Droids. Um, they kind of remind me of, like, uh, Death Troopers from, mm. like, the new canon, because especially because, like, they, like, buzz to each other. Um, yeah. It says a... Yeah, the the way that they're, like, uh, screech is kind of portrayed reminds me of how, like, the 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 Death Troopers have, like, the scrambled communications and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, I don't know, the idea of, like, having brains, like, in a droid, like, just kind of in some sort of vat is kind of cool and very uh, nice. dark, I guess. Yeah. I like the look of the, um, what are they called again? Like, the, the turbo laser towers. Uh, they don't appear, they appear in Dark Empire 1. I don't think they're in Dark Empire 2. Yeah, the, um, uh... What did you call them in TR? Yeah, X-R-D-5s, but you call them something when complaining about them in TR. I can't remember. Wheelie boys? (laughs) Um, What about you? Which which one? Do you have any any preference? I got to go with Shadow Droids, too. Like... I think if the SD9s and 10s weren't there, like the Vipers are weird to me, but I don't mind them as much. It's just the the SD9s and 10s that I particularly dislike. Yeah, I mean, they're not very Star Wars-y. Like Star Wars doesn't really go with mechs very often. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. I, I guess they're not really mechs. I think they're just like humanoid droids. Yeah, but... they're kind of like Dark Trooper Phase 3s almost. Mm. Large... But I, I'm yeah. I'm not sure if I feel it's less Star Warsy than the Humvee at the start of Dark Empire One. I've been kind of going back and forth on that. Yeah, no, I I agree with that. Um, the yeah, the, I I don't know. The Viper is just a little goofy looking to me because it's like supposed to be this really powerful thing, and it's got like whiskers and like it's like a big bug. <laughs> yeah, but I like I. That I can see being more Star Warsy. It's it's a little Cthulhu-y, actually. But it is. Uh, I was I was just about to say that it's a little Cthulhu-y. But yeah. Uh, how come the uh, how come the shadow droids not in uh, Thrawn's Revenge? Uh, it's not yet in Thrawn's Revenge. Yeah. That's why. You okay. want to make the model? Oh, I don't. Okay. I mean, I do, well, but I can't. <laughs> just send me a box. <laughs> <laughs> there you go bud <laughs> but now we have a lot more artists so it's possible it'll happen sooner than later also just noticed that you can actually see after the battle of Balmora, you can actually see the alliance with a uh, world devastator in their fleet i didn't notice that yeah it looks like it's pumping out uh corvettes and stuff it's pretty cool I is it using that as a hangar or is it using is just I think that's like the furnace so i think those are probably new ships hmm <laughs> Fully crewed? Yeah, I think so. Or I, it might just be positioning. I don't know. But, cool. but there's also the, the ships that look like World Devastators but aren't. Hmm. Which I, that isn't, but it's... Yeah, no, like you... That's mean, definitely the weird. World Devastator. That's like... This book does probably lot. the most classic Sorry, depiction of the World Devastator. That is, yeah. Because yeah. the Dark I, I Empire agree. one ones were all a lot more unique, but that's very much the mm. the standard one. So yeah. Um, this book does a or sorry, these comics do kind of what the Marvel comics did as well. With the they have lots of like sort of Corellian looking ships. They take like the yeah. basic idea of a Corellian Corvette and they stretch it out or add extra engines and stuff. I quite like that um, because Corellian ships are supposed to be really modular and, you know, lots of designs based on this, like one kind of design family. And you get lots of that. If you, there's like certain, whenever they show the rebel fleet and certain uh, Marvel comic arts, it's just like that with different sort of Corvettes. And I think that's where the DP 20 originally came from. Um, Mm. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, that makes our jobs a lot easier, too, for TR. Just, like, add an extra engine. Baby, you got a brand new ship going. Yeah. You know what's a cool ship you guys need to add to uh, Republic or Fall of the Republic? Nope. Podcast's over. No, what? 
<laughs> Call myself before it was even out, so I don't want to hear it. The the ship the Jedi have, um Chantor? Oh, the the one where they go to Ilum, it's uh Oh, I know um, what you're talking about. Uh in the Clone Wars the episode with the uh, droid. Crucible? Uh that sounds it's from right. The Crucible. Yeah, Paladin <coughs> class Corvette. It's got such a cool design. Um, you can actually see it throughout the Clone Wars, like in the background sometimes. Mm. Um, I notice that a lot when I'm rewatching the show. Uh, like after a ship appears for the first time, it's like every episode they do something in the background, it's there. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a really, really cool design, in my opinion. You got to add that in. Yeah, so that's actually something we've both been doing is rewatching the Clone Wars to get ready for, uh, for the Clone Wars season seven, six, yeah. seven, seven, seven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we'll do like a special episode at some point. Yeah, I was just thinking getting ready for that either before or after some of it's out just to, Hmm. yeah, cause there's 12 episodes, I believe one a week. Um, Yeah. So it's not really going to be practical to cover. I'd love to cover every episode, but, and maybe like that's something we could consider for Mando season two, Mm -hmm. um, where it's much more, well, I guess it's not much more manageable, but it is more manageable. (laughs) It's two episodes Um, more manageable. Isn't it eight for Mando? Is it eight? I thought it was ten, but no, I think you're right. It's eight. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Let's just let's just, let's just get sidetracked for a second. How far are you in Clone Wars? What's your favorite episode been so far? And um, yeah, well, like what what are your impressions? I'm uh. I- decent way into season three right now still i i was going a lot slower than i wanted to but i picked up the mm-hmm. pace in the last couple of days but i i did like yeah. the mandalore arc which i know is like probably one of the most controversial things to say on the internet but you mean just because of like the pacifist mandalorians and yeah stuff? but i thought the <laughs> yeah. arc itself was really well done uh i agree the design I, of mandalore too yeah and just you get to see a side of Obi-Wan that you don't usually get to see. And I think Obi-Wan is the character that benefits most from the series. Uh, Mm. But one of the things that's been kind of weird to me is that the, uh, just the way certain relationships work where like Anakin almost spends more time with Mace Windu than with Obi-Wan. Yeah, no, I agree. Especially in season two. I don't know if that's going to continue on in season three. I don't remember, but. Not really with Mace, but he definitely spends, like, they definitely are split up. Um, what's, like, you know, Anakin's with the 501st uh, a lot of the time. And what's the name of obi One Star Destroyer again? Because <sighs> Anakin usually has the resolute. That's one thing I quite like about the ship, how, like, they give, like, each of the main Jedi, like, you know, like Plo Koon has his own, uh, like, you know, he's got like Plo's bros and all that, like all those guys. Anakin's got the Resolute and the 501st. So, you know, like if Anakin's coming, he'll probably have, um, you know, it, it's just cool how like you can expect Anakin to have the Resolute. You kind of know what sort of assets he has. Like, you know, you learn will probably be there. Um, I don't remember what the name of obi One ship is, though. But yeah, sorry, I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Was it the negotiator? I don't know. It might be. Maybe. I think he had two. Oh yeah, because isn't one it's of them? It's something and then the negotiator. Or doesn't negotiator and then up. it. Yeah, um, it might be negotiator that that dies and then he gets something else after. It's like because you know, right, I actually just watched that episode. Ian, um, <laughs> And I, I want to say it gets trapping, blown up. That's um, Coons. It gets blown up when they're when Ahsoka gets captured by mm-hmm. Hondo because he's he's on his way to save her, and it's, it's not even like a major battle. It's just kind of something that happens. Like it, it's basically just a reason for him not to be able to save her. Um, but it's cool how like you know whenever Obi Wan's there, you know like he's got Cody and the clones of like the two twelfth. I think is his. And then Anakin's uh, got Rex and all the clones there. Um, but yeah, so do you have a, that's your favorite arc. What have your thoughts been generally, I guess? I've enjoyed it watching it through this time a lot more than I did before, especially since I skipped a good part of season one. Uh, mm. 
Like I think it's Which been I think is overall capable. an enjoyable show. The first season, though, I think is like in a lot of ways just bad. The first season in the movie are uh. I I don't enjoy them. Uh, but I think once you get past that, because I think in the first scene, there's a lot of like the whole Clone Wars take place on Naboo. And then mm. that's kind of. Yeah. The uh, the right left arc is season one, right? And the the malevolence right one, I guess that's the. Yeah. Uh, the, like, Storm malevolence right is and really stuff. early on. Yeah. I think malevolence is like this at right after the first episode. Yeah. Um those ones are cool but yeah I, I agree i th- I think you can like whenever you go on like reddit or twitter or wherever people are like you gotta watch every episode but really like you don't um yeah watch the first season until malevolence gets destroyed then skip until season two it's kind it's of like literally like, episode four i think that happens yeah there's one episode then there's malevolence rising destroy Male- or grievous intrigue destroy malevolence but, I, but yeah it I'm not a huge season one fan, but I'm really looking forward to... I don't think I've ever actually watched a good part of season five mm-hmm. or six, and that Me, seems yeah. to be when it's the best, so I'm really looking forward to that. I've been really enjoying seasons two and three, though, so... Season three is really cool because you get lots of... You see... I think that's that has the Senate arc in it, um, yeah. which is really fun. Uh, well, I, I think that's my favorite arc. It's the uh, last part of, of season two that has like the... Anaconda Far assassination and stuff. That yeah. one, or are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, other stuff afterwards? there's like there's that one, and then there's the stuff afterwards with like the banking clan. Right. Um, okay. Where uh, we get the the symbol for the banking clan in their little room thing that never comes up that, anywhere else. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's where we got the icon for Fall of the Republic. Oh. But interesting. Uh, but yeah, so good- Cedrus is uh, is a cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we'll definitely we'll definitely have something coming up for the podcast on the Clone Wars, but we'll we'll try to stay on track here. Yeah, maybe once you're done, we'll just do like a series recap or something, or like a right. I don't know. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. Let's get back on topic. <laughs> um, I may not have a voice so- by the time we get to issue six. So I'm- <laughs> Um, that's okay we're like halfway through issue one so far <laughs> okay we're we're right on track 40 minutes in halfway through issue one we'll be done by midnight i'm sorry sir joins the new republic everyone trusts him no questions asked even though he was just recently a dark jedi um uh oh so i guess the next major thing after that is the kind of issue so what's the name of the guy in balmora again um uh, Governor Burr, 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 Burr. Beltane, so, is it? Beltane, yeah. So he decides basically to work with the Alliance, and the Alliance comes up with this plan to basically sneak into Biss, which is the Imperial uh, throne world at this time. It's where Palpatine's centered. It's where the Galaxy Gun is being built, and the fleet is there largely. Um, so there's kind of like the heroes kind of go in three directions, or four directions, I guess. You've got Luke uh, and Cam go off to Ossus, which is like an ancient Jedi world. Um, we've got Lando, the droids, and uh, shock troopers going to Biss. We've got um, Han and Leia going to Nar Shadda, and then they go to New Alderaan, and then and we have like Sala and the others who are also going to Biss to try to get their ship back. So we kind of have four plot lines um hmm. that we can and then they kind of end up sort of in the same place at the end not all of them but they they kind of do end up winding back together yeah they end up all on new alderaan except for the abyss assault well, the abyss assault they they end up too because they they go back in the with the pirates they get rescued remember at the oh, very right, end yeah. the, not the pirates the, but stopping the assault yeah. in order yeah yeah so I guess what I think the first one that's really that we go through is the journey back to Nar Shadda. And I know kind of how you feel about that. You're not. Well, I know how you feel about Boba Fett being so uh, prominent. Personally, I think the whole going back to Nar Shadda is kind of a waste. I do like that they go back for Vima because she's kind of an interesting character. But 
It's just like a lot more of what we got in like the second and third issue or the third and fourth issue of Dark Empire one. It's yeah. like being chased through Narshida. It's kind of a waste. Yeah, it, it's really unnecessary. Like, because Boba is put there partially because they just want to do Boba Fett's cool stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. And then the rest, like you're saying, is very similar to what we get with uh, with Dark Empire 1. It's just they're looking for Vima. They get her. Get attacked by Boba. Chewie gets shot. Oh, wait, no, actually just a flesh wound. Uh, Chewie yeah. steals his helmet. And then, uh, oh, wait, he had a spare of his dad's mm-hmm. precious helmet. That was very ch- ch- uh, very precious to him. But there <laughs> is... Rain in it. <laughs> yeah, there, there's one key moment in the <laughs> Narshad arc with Boba Fett, which uh, I messaged you about. And yeah. I think it was very rude of Han to bring up. Um. I believe this is an issue too. Yeah. Uh, and poor Boba Fett, like he's been through enough. And after he shoots Chewbacca, Chewbacca had attacked him. This is fair enough. But Boba Fett shoots Chewbacca, and they say to him, "If Chewie's hurt, you can start kissing your mother's picture goodbye, Fett." <laughs> yikes his mother's a tube (laughs) (laughs) his his daddy's jism (laughs) is that how you think the clones were made they just got Django fed to jizz into a (laughs) tube like Django buddy I know you're tired no, it's mostly just sand coming out at this point, but you need to keep going. A million more well on the way. <laughs> I'm going to knock over to her house. We need the new batch tonight. Mm. <laughs> it really just puts the bad batch in a new light. Yeah. He was drunk that night. Oh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> What's the, uh, what's the, Kim, uh, Kemi Noen, again, what's her name? Um, uh, uh the, the chief one. Yeah. <laughs> Django, if you're, if you're going out on the night, if you're going on the club tonight, you're taking Kosai with you just in case. <laughs> <laughs> so there was also, speaking of Boba Fett backstory, there yeah, was, uh, the Imperials, when he's getting hired by them and telling him his rates, go, actually, we're going to pay you less. <laughs> go fuck yourself, mm-hmm. Boba. Uh, they say yeah. they know he's a former stormtrooper. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. And I don't think that's one that they even ever tried to retcon later. I think they just kind of left that as it was. <laughs> like, yeah. let's just hope no one reads this panel. <laughs> well, they're going to say they Watch were wrong. The these yeah. these people were wrong. That's always a fair way to retcon things. Yeah. Like. No, that character was was an idiot. Strong armor. So have uh, an issue two dark troopers. Um, mm. Not to be confused not, with not, regular dark troopers or other dark troopers. To be confused with shadow troopers, or black hole troopers, or the three or four other variants of troopers that have dark armor. These are just yeah, yeah. They're uh, they're the four sensitive ones. Right. Yeah, yeah, they are because they can. Yeah. They're like, they're also like the, they're supposed to be the best of the best. Like how many different stormtrooper types are like referred to as being the best of the best? <laughs> uh, all of them actually at all points are always the best of the best. Yeah. But there is a pretty key plot point we skipped over at the end of issue one. Uh oh. The, a little guy you may know as Mr. Sheev comes back. Oh, yeah. We might want to mention that. Oh, well, we did kind of mention it because we talked yeah, about how we he talked about the clones, but. Comes back. Uh, he's young and sexy again. Um, and he's overseeing. I don't. Do we get the galaxy unintroduced? I don't think in issue one. No, but... I think that's issue three. Okay. But yeah, he's got these new. I mean, he has. 
obviously he's got these new dark Jedi working for him even more than uh, he did in issue one or sorry in Dark Empire one. So he's kind of trying to manage them right now. Cedrus is like hot shit for him, um, but he's also pretty concerned about capturing the Jedi twins and the new Jedi coming from Leia. Yeah, like he he basically calls Cedrus his boy in this one, and then just wants to kill him later. But uh, Palpatine is super weird and dark and like. Just the the way it portrays people as like his friends and my boy and buddy and all that stuff. Yeah, it, it's a lot it's more like personal, the, less paternal. In the audio production, he calls Leia his daughter. He calls Luke his son. That that's um, more Palpatine. He basically always when he's trying to get people to do stuff for him, and he's trying to sweet talk him. He's more paternal, right? Uh, when but he has his, no reason to sweet talk these. Like they're already working for him. Yeah, know? like the. With his minions, he's supposed to be kind of like, do what I say. And Ooh. with, uh, yeah, I can do him pretty well when my voice sounds turned like on there, I'm not going to lie. Uh, hmm. But the, just like, the idea that Palpatine has friends is actually just weird to me. Yeah. No, I agree. Sorry, I didn't mean to make that so loud either. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, to be fair, I mean, this was pretty early on. Like, as we talked about last episode, there wasn't a, you know, the yeah, whole. No, that it, it's fair. We do see Palpatine buddy, buddy in Return of the Jedi with those, um. Ewoks? It was a cut scene, but. Uh, like he's, you know, he's always chatting with those guys with like the, the funny hats and stuff, like his inner <laughs> circle. Yeah. And, like, he does seem kind of buddy-buddy because, like, you see him just, like, walk off, talk to them, like, and, like, he takes his bros with him in a shuttle. Like, maybe they were, like, maybe he was sitting alone meditating, but maybe also they were, like, playing Heads Up 7-Up or, like. <laughs> I don't think anyone Sabacc plays or, Heads Up 7-Up after 7th grade. Not with a Force user. It's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> I already know who you're going to pick. <laughs> Man, the Empire sucks. I always lose it heads up seven up with Palpatine. <laughs> uh, yeah, Palpatine's version of cheating at heads up seven up would just be not even putting his head down. <coughs> just waiting for someone to try to call him on it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to fuck with me. That's like, have you ever seen those videos where Putin's playing ice hockey? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like everyone's pretending he's like NHL caliber. Dude can hardly skate. <laughs> All right. I'm going to need to find a new co host when Justin mysteriously disappears. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm I'm willing to make the, the strong stance here that Dark Empire 2, issue 2 is the most disposable piece of Star Wars content we've covered on this podcast so far. Uh, well, the end of mine has a pretty cool um, ad for, <laughs> for the okay, mask, the for, comic series. So, also so mask Wars. ads aside. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. And I mean, the death of um, Zazam and... Forget the other one, the two dark giant at the end where they basically oh, no, you don't care about Mako. yeah, where they basically get um the citadel or not a citadel but the the tower through their ship and they die because the they're dumb goofy. enough to tractor beam tractor it. <laughs> beam a building to stab their ship with it's I I don't buy that as a way to destroy a star destroyer yeah I'm gonna but like so much of the yeah act, like. The this book or this issue is just getting Vima, which uh, they could have done that before. Really, it could have been much shorter. And th this doesn't need. I feel like all this stuff that happens in this issue doesn't need to be stuff we necessarily see. Just have like a few panels of like. Meanwhile, on Narshada, Leia and Han find the Jedi that had been that had talked to them before. Is that your version of like the uh, intro for the Clone Wars. 
There's like, heroes on both sides of this issue. Where... War rages. <laughs> Sorry, I definitely just blew up my mic there. War rages in the Nashida system where Boa Fett shows up and does literally nothing. Oh, <laughs> did he shoot Chewbacca? No, he did not. But I, I feel like I, I, if I, I just I if I could just have not read this one, my opinion of Dark Empire Two would have been much higher. Uh, I mean, okay, issue three is much more substantial. Um, we get, as you said, the galaxy gun stuff. We see it in um, con- under construction. Apparently, it's been in plain view of all these smugglers, and no one thinks to tell the New Republic. Not very chill. Yeah, this has been very, very accessible to people, <laughs> and yeah. it's... It's kind of concerning. <laughs> just fly into Biss. They just fly into Biss. <laughs> like when the when they get in with their codes. Like I don't think I was looking again to see if there's like any mention that someone's going with them or someone's, go- or is it just like coincidence that literally the next ship coming into the system is another smuggler that they sold the codes to? The thing is, the code is just the beat to Funky Town. That's a South Park reference, but um, sorry, I forgot to mention, mention this. In issue two, we do get a mention of Winter, which kind of warmed my heart because it reminded me of the much better Thrawn trilogy. It's like, oh, Winter, I miss you. <laughs> hey, we, be... we get Winter back in a couple issues, though. She's in like I two panels. Give to be cracking uh, Delta Source inside the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's like Coruscant right now. <laughs> Back in the day when we'd crack open a Delta Source with the boys. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we, we get the Galaxy Gun. No one's telling the New Republic. Not very epic. Um, we get Luke and his really ugly starfighter in um, Cam Solisar going to Ostis. And which happens to be not only a ancient planet of Jedi, but also a contemporary or a modern planet of Jedi, because we get like two new ones, one of which Luke probably um, wants to do the dirty with. So it's a very, very probably. successful trip for him. <laughs> it's a little awkward because the first time um, Jem is introduced, she's described as a youth. Hmm. Uh, she's 23. I think she's introduced as explicitly being 23 and Rafe is 15. Serious? Does actually, oh, it actually does say that. Wow. <laughs> actually, I think it was just joking, but it actually says young man aged 15. Okay. I'm going to mute for. <laughs> okay. So while Corey's muted, um, we get to Osis. There are these two Jedi. They're tied to an ancient tree. Um, Luke frees them. Um, and basically, there's this race of people on this planet called the Isana. Um, I guess they're like sort of descendants of the Jedi. Um, they're not super chill with Luke and Cam coming to the planet, they don't speak basic. But when Luke shows his Jedi abilities, um, they are basically like, okay, Jedi are pretty cool. Um, and the Asana have some like basic force abilities. Um, but Luke even says like, okay, they've got some abilities, but their sorcery or their magic, they call it is very, very rudimentary. Their attacks, he says are very easy to block and they all need training. Um, uh, but once he kind of gets the, uh, once he gets the trust of them, he gets a big bear hug from one. And basically he's in there. He gets their confidence. Um, and we get the, the showdown with, Oh, I'm back. Okay. Sorry. I was just explaining the Asana. I'm just carrying the podcast for a few minutes here. About time. At the part where a uh, scourge one comes and uh, Luke and the Asana face off against Dark Jedi. Do you want to talk about that? So, uh, were Rafe and Jem explicitly siblings? I think so, yeah. Why are they tied to the tree as well? Uh, punishment. 
sexual release. I don't know. Why did Ood not speak up beforehand? Like, hey, I am not into this. No, that's kind of a Yoda thing to do. Just let people tie their kids. Is this just how they're in timeout or something? Yeah. yeah. Or it's or it's not tying class, baby. I like how Luke's like first response to seeing these like young people tied to a tree is like, I'm going to kidnap them. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that fits with some of what Luke's done. Uh, not a great teacher. He loses most of his students. <laughs> One in the next few issues. Um, uh, well, do we count Empire's End as the next few issues? Because technically, both of them in the next few issues. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, what do you think of the Asana though? I mean, we get so many like Legends has like so many quasi jedi races um four sensitive races or not not races but like um practices i guess or like yes yeah. i'm i'm kind of mixed on them because like the idea of like kind of a divergent jedi school from the jedi school uh from like the period of the sith wars is kind of interesting but it's like the jedi order still knew they had a, a temple there they would have probably gone back and yeah. we get a lot. We get like the Baron Doe, the Ang T, the Fallon Nassi. Yeah, they're yeah. they end up like becoming just kind of like primitive and regressing or something. And it doesn't really make yeah. sense. It's it's kind of like a worse uh they just feel like worse Night Sisters to me. Like yeah, the, I mean, the, the culture of the Night Sisters makes more sense than like how they got there, whereas these guys just kind of like sprung up around the Jedi or their former Jedi or And it's like, how did they not get wiped out as well? Because like Osis, Palpatine should have known about that. Um, well, it's been Baron four thousand years of like not being found. That's sent, apparently, that's yeah, that, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, like I like the Baron Doe because they're like specifically hiding and trying to distance themselves um, yeah. from the Jedi. But when you get sorry, I'm a little second voice crack there. But when you get to like. Um, Alanasi as much, for example. Um, the Ang T are okay because they're like kind of weird and they're like supposed to be very kind of they stay away from people, but Legends definitely does have a lot. I think we're, we'll probably get stuff like that in Canon too as well. Um because it's been a bit less it's kind of focused on the fact that like Jedi don't have the full um lights of the light side. You know, they talk about that in like episode eight. I guess they mentioned that in like in Clone Wars and Rebels as well. Like yeah. the light side is just the light side. The Jedi are just like an organization. They're they're not like the light side personified or anything. Yeah, even with like Bendu or whatever he's now called, you get a bit of that. Do but... take the very uh, like the Night Sister esque. Uh, they call their Force abilities magic, um, so it, they are. Kind of like worse Night Sisters, I agree. I do like how Luke just gets a Force vision and can now suddenly understand them sometimes. I do also like how he's like, these guys fucking suck. <laughs> he's like to Cam Solisar, he's like, wow. Like, they need training. <laughs> Thank God they didn't just kill us because they're incompetent. Yeah. So are they using uh, Force Lightning there? Or is that just like... Uh, or like some sort of... Uh, I, th I think I kind of took it as Force Lightning. I wasn't sure if it was Force Lightning or just like a way for them to draw and indicate that they were controlling something. Yeah, who knows? It was magic. Yeah. How old... Like Luke's 33 here, I think, right? That it's old? about 11 ABY. And he was born... He was born in 19, so he's 30. 11 ABY? I thought it was... Uh, it's either 10 or 11. I'm not sure exactly which. Uh, yeah, So yeah, he's, he's getting up there. He's 29 or 30. Our little boy, is a, he's getting up there, isn't he? Uh, I guess that age gap isn't horrible. Oh, I mean... No, it's not like uh, Lando and uh, Tendra or anything. Hmm. Of course. 
There, there's. Mm. If you would have went for the brother, that might have been a bit much. Probably. He really. He really shouldn't be deciding that he wants to be her boyfriend and teacher simultaneously. There, there's some power dynamic yeah. issues that uh, not okay. Luke's excuse is like, well, no one taught me. <laughs> it's like, Luke, maybe stop banging your students or letting them and letting them die. Like, that does seem to happen a lot. Yeah. Well, like, stop banging the body of your student possessed by a ghost. Like, <sighs> who hasn't done that though? True. Not really a ghost. Well, yeah, a ghost. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Ord, uh, Ode Binar, um Does Lucas solid he, here. He, wakes up. Yeah, he needs himself. He wakes up. He saves his girl, and he just he just fucks off. He's like, nah. <laughs> yeah, like, Cedric like, oh, is very clearly restrained there. Yeah. And Luke is holding a, a an ignited lightsaber, so you know just. Yeah, but by doing that, he also shoots um, what's her name right on top of Luke. Um, That's true. And they find themselves eye to eye. So maybe what a wing man. This, Yeah, he saw this as a potential to like you know like next generation Jedi baby. Let's go. Mm, no thanks. God, Luke looks so much like Gary Busey in Dark Empire. He really does. <laughs> like Gary Busey, like with the broken jaw, maybe. The hair especially is very Businian. <laughs> you ever fall in love with the girl so quick that you just learn her ancient lost language, though? <laughs> <laughs> I've often heard that falling in love means feeling like you've known someone for a thousand years immediately. Get that shit out of here. And Luke Luke not making good uh, strides towards not being an incel here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Luke Luke is cringy. Um, Cedrus is dead, so I don't know. Doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah, I was probably overstating it earlier. Poor one out for You're Cedrus. He's dead. You're full of it. <laughs> um, what was the other though, guy? Which get, was the yeah. other guy's name? I should really figure that out. Uh, um, Vilgor. Okay, everyone, uh, let's have a moment of silence for Vilgor. Literally, Vilgoire. just forgot about it. <laughs> He's no one gave a fuck. I literally forgot about it already. <laughs> I don't know. I said always does stick with me though, because he has. Well, he was got the interesting name. Yeah, he's. Uh, he's got the interesting name. He is half the guy. Um, he's the executor. <clears throat> He's a hero in Thrawn's Revenge. What else could you really want in life? That's pretty much it. Um, so we get to Biss again. No, 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 no. We're not skipping this. This is important. They happen to just open a crack in the ground. Fucking lightsabers. Oh, uh, yes. Right. Like, lightsabers that work and are 4,000 years old. And do they just fucking power rangers them up in the air and Yeah. Um Yeah, and Gary Busey has one, so it's cool that they decide to introduce him into the story. <laughs> <laughs> and then they touch shafts immediately, which is like <laughs> considering how old these lightsabers are, and they're like, oh shit, this still works. Like lightsabers have literally like a power source in them. Like they could explode. Like you could have blown Luke's face off. Um, yeah. Forget whether or not they work. Turning them on is stupid. Yeah. And like, you know, Cam Solisar probably knows that shit. Like, he's, he's been around the block, but he's like, God damn it. Like, I got to do what Luke wants or else he's going to kick me out. <laughs> he's like, wow, these are... He says, this is great, Luke. These corroded antiques still work. He's basically saying, you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> these are these are trash. <laughs> you're going to get me killed, aren't you? Um, uh, surprisingly, art, Cam he's... does not get killed. So, Makes sense. him and Tion get their most of their limbs cut off by Jason, but well, not Jason, but that guy. Or yeah. Um, but the I find the art in these like last few panels is pretty dreadful. What about that that one like face on 
picture of Jem looking at uh, Udbinar. Is that not creepy to you? It's not good. <laughs> like, it's it's all like rough. Like the ships are good, but like, like I really feel like the art quality declines in Dark Empire Two. I never really noticed it before now. All right. So, I mean, the faces were always pretty rough, but like. So sorry for interrupting. I, I thought it was very important that we talk about those lightsabers. Oh, well, I completely forgot because it's such a dumb fucking moment. Uh. <laughs> but if you want to get started on uh, issue four, I will be right back. We got another podcast to do, apparently. Um, so issue four opens up with the rebels basically mounting an attack on Biss. And I really like Biss. I think it's like an interesting plan. It's like an even darker Imperial throne world. We do have planets like Coruscant and whatnot, but they never like fully embrace the dark side um, quite like Biss does. It's like literally looks like warped uh, by the dark side. There's all these, you know, um, giant automata flo- floating around these, um, the Viper, not Viper droids, the giant probe droids, the probots. Um, we see the galaxy gun. Palpatine's basically there uh, testing it out. We see them loading ammunition, which is pretty cool. Um, and we also have something I want to talk about when uh, Corey gets back. We have, um, oh, what's his name again? Um, not the designer of the Death Star, but he's basically, he designed the Death Star Super Laser. Um, Lef, oh, what's his name? Um, but yeah, he's basically the one behind all these new technologies. Um, and and yeah, so, so he's he's behind the Galaxy Gun. And we have a moment that we kind of mentioned earlier as well with uh, Palpatine christening kind of new dark Jedi. So we just lost two more um, at Osis. Palpatine is like, okay, we've got like none left. He just chooses two random dudes basically who happen to be on the galaxy gun at, like this time. Like one of them could have been a janitor. We don't know. <laughs> no, we do, we do know who they are. But um, and he just basically gives them this their force powers, which isn't really something you see a whole lot in legends. People have force powers taken from them sometimes, but it's not very often that they're just kind of gifted powers. It is kind of in line with what else we get in dark empire because Palpatine kind of sees all of these things as kind of like an extension of his will, like the eclipse, for example, especially in the dark empire source book, is talking is is talked about as like an extension of the dark side and his presence, the uh, the shadow droids specifically too. There's kind of an allusion to the fact that Palpatine um, controls them directly, and that's probably one of the benefits of having shadow droids, which have the sort of actual organic brain in them and some connectivity to the Force, versus battle droids or droid starfighters. You know, Palpatine can use his battle meditation. Um, which actually is kind of relevant because back on Osis, we have um, Luke with some of the Asana going into this secret library that they've basically been protecting um, for years and years and years. Uh, they find ancient Jedi texts, including ones that basically detail battle meditation, uh, other stuff like that. But because it's basically so shit, it's been standing for 4,000 years. Um they decide to just take what they can get and you know they've got stuff to do they can't be camping on osis for uh the entire oh he's back i am back uh the expedition into the uh, crappy osis library right uh yeah and luke not only knows how to understand it the spoken language it, he can also read the written language uh i'm, yeah. I'm not sure if that's like a, the osis thing or if that's just uh, Luke has other reading skills that they don't have. It might be in Galactic Basic. It's probably in Galactic Basic and just kind of rusty and hard to read. But, uh, but yeah, we get the, like, all the battle meditation mentions. Yeah. You know, sometimes like guys will like shoot the shit about like stuff they kind of half know about. Like, oh, yeah, that uh, looks like your wheel bearings are a little loose there. Or it's like, oh, yeah, that deck, you know. You, you know what I'm talking about? It's just like. I started in Cam Sol, you sorry. He's like, yeah, this roof is looking pretty shitty. He's like, no idea what he's talking about. The roof's completely fine. <laughs> You're gonna need a crew in here for that. 
force that oh, it's gonna be asbestos up there it's just an excuse for them to get together and drink yeah so i guess we'll have to go to the campfire and chill for a bit it's like when we tell kelsey and dan we're gonna be working but really we're just playing mario kart she might listen to this show. oh shit no she won't She's not <laughs> there's no goddamn chance she was like, what's a dark empire? Um, but yeah, we get another scene. We get another really useless scene. I mean, I guess it's not useless because it's a transition scene, but we get the Falcon being chased by nope. more. Uh, we're, we're really bearing the lead again there because uh, there's one more part of Osis. Uh, the, what dark empire does a lot is there's some dramatic irony and there's some foreshadowing. Uh, yeah. Where a character yeah. like in the first in the first issue, Cedra says, "You got to use your enemy's stuff against them. That's how you do warfare." And he's talking about using the Viper droids against the Belmorans. But what ultimately ends up happening with there is that the Viper droids that he thinks he's stolen get stolen by the rebels to use against the Empire, and they invade Biss that way. Uh, but we get another instance of it here with the uh, oh, with uh, Yasana where uh Jem is telling Luke like I want to be I want to be a Jedi with you and Luke says you know what your whole tribe is strong with it we're going to talk to those guys we're going to get you set up you and your brother you're coming with me he's a minor I'm your recruiter <laughs> uh I'm your teacher slash uh boyfriend now uh nothing weird about any of this and all the elders are like no this is a fucking bad idea and <laughs> They they say, but our gods told us this is stupid, but also not to stop you. Uh, yeah. So Cam's like, don't worry, it'll be epic. <laughs> yeah, you won't regret it. <laughs> Two issues you later, yeah. you fucking better regret it. We got one down already. <laughs> <laughs> this does not go well for them. She's got a crush on her. She's like not even strong in the force at all. She's sh- she's like a shitty Jedi. <laughs> she like immediately lashes out and breaks the remote, and that's not a great sign and it's like oh, oh that, that may be fair, dark side stuff does Mara <coughs> do the same thing um, yeah but Luke's Mara trailer? is like explicitly dark side at that point too uh, okay have we, have we covered this crucial topic well there was one other crucial topic I wanted to talk about to complain about issue 2 again where uh, they're getting into the fight on Narshada. Uh, and they blow up the one of the fighters or one of the ships belonging to uh to the smuggler friends, and Leia and Han are basically yeah go cry about it cry babies. But like if the Millennium Falcon got blown up, you better believe yeah. there'd be some sobbing going on. So now we can continue. Yeah. And also the smugglers through this entire like series are complete bros. Yeah, like. Sala comes through literally every opportunity. Like in issue five, I think she's got literally no reason to help the Alliance anymore. Besides like, she's a, she's a good gal. Um, she's like, well, better go save them. Yeah. Even they're just in a bar. Over. And Leia's a, Leia's a dick to her too. She's like, yeah, she's like, like just because Leia's got some shit going on in her life, she makes it seem like that's the only thing that matters. Not only does Sal want to help them, friend. she, yeah, she's in an imperial bar on the new imperial capital. That's basically just a secret imperial base, and she's like, "Hey, who wants to fuck up some imperials?" Like, you don't just do that if you're a coward who wants to cry about a ship being blown up. Come on, Leia. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Up oh, another scene with Boba. Guess what happens with it? Literally nothing. He gets left alone, and then they, when they're coming out, they find him again, and guess what happens? Oh, nothing. So, Boba, thanks. Listen, listen, listen. You're focusing on the negative. Let's focus on the positive. And Potiche host brand. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to... I'm trying to make sure we have all the Boba points out of the way no before points. we He's talk. there. About. Yeah. That's it. So, Potiche host <laughs> brand. I thought he was a cool dude. Kind of thinking he's a dick now. Um, he's basically... He was a Jedi who got really messed up by Vader. It is Vader, right? Specifically, yeah. I think he got or messed Vader's up by Vader. Hunter. He's he's in like this suit. Um, he kind of looks like 
BB-8, kind of. Um, BBH drunk uncle, maybe. Uh, and he's aboard this like steamship. How you power a, a starship with steam? I, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I guess just like any other power source. Um, he didn't really try to help or anything. He just basically, after the purge starts, he kind of just sets up on the steamship and is like, well, guess I'll be a benevolent ruler now. Yeah, I'm ruling this area of space. And they all thought, hey, a Jedi could do this. And like, yeah. Nothing bad could happen if a Jedi became your ruler. Yeah. <laughs> when Jedi are literally being hunted and he's not exactly uh, easy to miss. He floats around and is kind of a weirdo. Yeah. No, he's <clears throat> he's got like I, I don't know if he's just bored there. He's like, yeah, let's go <laughs> restart the Jedi Order or something. I'm going to hang out <laughs> with Leia and Vimma. Very le- at the very least, he could have been laying robot nut to like <laughs> making little Jedi, right? Like, am I right in saying that, or is that I, no? I I don't think he can do that. How much of him is in that suit? To party. Tell I you. like how he says he can be in vacuum, <laughs> but it's like his face is poking out. So <laughs> what do you mean you can be in a vacuum? It's like I could be in a vacuum for a year. It's like your eyes would pop out of your head. <laughs> like bro like you're not impressive that's like that's like the uh, i could throw this football over the mountain just clear bullshit <laughs> he's oh, just... i swear <laughs> don't try it like don't test it but <laughs> he's not actually the ruler that people just felt sorry for him <laughs> okay king he's a little sensitive because he's got literally nothing but a nose and eyes <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh uh, fuck. <laughs> so, uh, Ganath in space, is he the king of every uh, region in space or just that ship? No, because he put someone in charge of the fleet. So yeah, there's the more fleet. than that. So, yeah. Base as well. Um, like, also kind of reinforcing the fact that he's kind of a dick. Um, he kind of just changes Han's ship. Yeah. And he's like, Han's like, sure would like the missiles back. And he's like, nah, trust me. <laughs> These are cool. <laughs> like, no, I, I think she would really like the missiles. He's like, don't worry about it. Like, <laughs> what lightning gun is way cooler than missiles. Han's like, uh, yep. I don't want the missiles. <laughs> he's like, no, also, I made it look way less cool now, too. <laughs> it's got an antenna on the front. Trust me. It'll... <laughs> I know you were flying fine before. But... <laughs> Yeah, also, we changed completely how the ship handles. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> You'll get used to it. See, you haven't crashed yet. I like how, like, the Ganathans, when they're flying off, he's like, uh, I think he's found something else to do now. <laughs> like, he's yeah. not coming back. Don't send a royal guard or anything, too. Like, I feel like everyone's kind of low-key been tired of his shit for, like, <laughs> probably 20, 30 years. <laughs> like, goddamn, finally he's gone. Like... Should we send an escort so we can help him navigate through this notably treacherous region of space that people can't travel through? They're like, nah. Oh, <laughs> <Well>, good. <laughs> we want him to come back. <laughs> so Vima is firmly in the middle of our Jedi rankings for this uh, this group. Because uh, Leia, what? Vima, and then Ibadjaos. Uh, Rankings and power, you mean? Just no. Uh, how much we like them? Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, I don't know if I like this version of Leia. This is pregnant construction worker Leia. Um, <laughs> no, that's not. We only get that with uh, the last. Uh, no. The last one. Are you on? Do you have issue four open right now? Yeah. Uh, let's go see. to like the. Go to the page where Leia and Vim are, are standing right next to each other, and tell me that. Oh Leia shit! That's Leia. Like- yeah, she looks like the fucking linebacker, like a linebacker, like an NFL linebacker. Okay, no, you're right. A trucker uh, hat, she's got a full, like, full mullet. She's, like, for some reason, becoming pregnant made her very, like, barrel-chested. <laughs> like, I know that, like, pregnancy has, like, different effects on, like, the female form, but, like, I don't think it, like, turns you into a power lifter. I don't understand her hat. That's the big thing for me. <laughs> Uh, actually, you see, if you and Dana ever have kids, you'll get it. 
like when women become pregnant, they just have to wear a hat. That hat? Usually, yeah. It's got to have a brim at least. Okay. Uh, so this is actually something we've been building up to a lot on the podcast since like the first episode. Uh, are we saying that Empatageos' first actual appearance has not lived up to the hype we've been setting up for him? No comment. Because we actually, I think we talked about this last time uh, where I was saying that despite the fact that he's come up in every previous episode, after Dark Empire, we're never mentioning him again. And you got very upset about that. So are you finally on board with the uh, okay. Empata Jeho's brand caught? Look at his little nose hanging out over his armor. Come on. <sighs> It's pretty cute. I'm out on the brand. Yeah, I just think he's like the fact that they chose to give him a hover suit instead of legs and like what everybody else who loses stuff in Star Wars does. I mean, maybe that's because they've got divergent technology, but I don't know. That alone. Is he steam powered? Probably, yeah. They're just like steam wafting out of him at all times. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he's very like ghastly. <laughs> like, yeah. imagine seeing that in real life. Like, it's very. Would have been a cool imperial. Um, I guess maybe too Vader esque, but. Yeah, so we get the the raid on piss. Let's just skip to issue five. <laughs> Yeah, Radon right Biss happens. It's not very good. Not very epic. Doesn't go yeah. well. It starts off going well. I don't think it, it goes poorly well. until next uh, next issue. Yeah, but so the Vipers basically re- release Hell um, on all the lesser equipment. Um, and there's a lot of them, too. Like, it's a pretty big attack. Yeah, um, so the Balmorans basically filled up a freighter with uh, with Vipers that have Rebels in them. And send them to to Biss to wreck shit because they're trying to assault the Citadel. And it goes pretty well at first until Palpatine's like Yeah, one of those moments. The and Lando's like, new molecular shielding makes these droids indestructible. Nope. <laughs> until someone <I> <laughs> punches them. Yeah. I feel like the rebels gave up way too easily like fighting these beasts. Like, I don't know if the better option was to get out on foot and run away. Like, yeah, there weren't that many of them. (laughs) Well, there's like two or there's three. Yeah, just three new Walker types we get in that side. So that's cool. Or I think one of them is supposed to be an ADST. Yeah, there's kind of one that looks like if I remember, there's one that looks like an AT. DP maybe or they don't look like AT APs actually though because they're kind of the the two in the front there are kind of like yeah actually um those ones in the back you're looking at the one with the bridge right yeah that seem at the bridge those two in the back look almost exactly like concept art um for first order walkers so I wonder if they're based off like like Ralph McQuarrie concept or something. I think they are, and that Fractal Sponge actually did a model of one of them. Oh, yeah, I think you're right, actually. Because I've definitely seen ones that look like that before. Um, I'm pretty sure. Well, I, I, I think you're right. I think I've seen it. Um, but yeah, actually, if you look at the next panel over, I think the front one is supposed to be an ATST. I agree. So, yeah, ATSTs, then the Fractal, or the Concept Art one, and then... Another the third type there. Yeah. Cool. But then Chrysalis Beasts. Yeah, they just get ravaged. Um that's what I meant by like they probably probably was a better strategy than just like running. But I mean, I don't know. They they do get manhandled, so maybe I don't know, just like shoot them in the eye probably, but it's fine. Mm-hmm. And Salah helps them get out. Organizes her bar brawlers. Sala is like literally an absolute G. I wouldn't have minded if Sala showed up in other materials. Yeah, she's like the one 
<laughs> Lady, Han Solo. Lady Han Solo. I could see Sal like. Sorry, everyone had to hear know. that. Lady Han Solo, or did you cough? I like cough cleared my throat at the same time, and it ended up sounding like I don't know an angry dog or something. A cyborg uh, hound. Don't don't Neck. try to bring it back. <laughs> We're already done that that comic book, so we're not allowed to reference um, it again. Okay, good. So so yeah, she gets the the smugglers, they fight their way to their ships, which is kind of cool. They grab their uh, freighters. They all have kind of interesting designs and they pick up the uh the failed rebel army troopers and basically they piece out of there. Yeah, but one of the chrysalis beasts catches on and then falls off. But it, it looked cool for a while. Well, size inconsistency there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of like, size and consistency there. Like R2 is packing a massive piece of hardware. Like if it's <laughs> that big against it. Cause like, if you look at the other pictures, like, like, uh, let me scroll. Up. Yeah. Like the hand is as large as like, that one was just like really small handed one, but like a little bit of inconsistency there. Like, I don't know. These things are pretty tough. Like if you're telling me that like, R2 can basically shock that thing off the side. Um, and like we couldn't kill them with these advanced things. Like R2 uh, is basically MVP of Dark Empire though. Because he destroys yeah. everything pretty much. That's like Palpatine has a chance to shoot or shoot them down, and he's like, mm, no. probably won't. Don't we'll waste do any that. more firepower on these scum. What does that even mean? Are you saving turbo laser bolts for something? Yeah, exactly. It's just just like at the beginning of Star Wars. It's like, <laughs> don't pull off that escape pod. It's like, why not? I don't know. Maybe we should anyway. <laughs> uh, there is a, a budget here. Thank you very much. Yeah. There is a funny little... Um, A funny little? From a certain point of view? I don't think so. It's like uh, it's like the, the canon. It takes like all these characters from like... It's sort of like a canon version of Tales from the Moss Eisley Cantina. Oh, or yeah. No, no, I haven't. Is there's one about the... Uh... I was standing in chapters reading parts of it. So I was just trying to think about... If, if you do listen to it, get the audiobook because it's, uh, it's pretty good. Um... But there's one where it's like from the perspective of the turbo laser gunner or whatever. And it's like talking about how he's got to count for each shot he takes and stuff. So it's like there's accounting reasons not to fire the at the empty escape pod. Not strictly canon or anything, just kind of fun. So I know I don't usually read chat because this is mostly a podcast, but someone said, I love tap cap transmissions with General Grievous and Eckhart's ladder. <laughs> Time to abandon ship. <laughs> Even for the Clone Wars episode. I hope your voice is still bad. I don't, but I wouldn't be upset. What wouldn't you be upset about? If when we if when we do our eventual Clone Wars tap calf, if uh, you you have a major voice regression. You want me to just still be sick next week? I didn't want to say that, but no, not next week because we'll we're doing Empire's End next week, aren't we? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Allegedly. Actually, yeah, allegedly. Anyway, the gang uh, all heads back to. Oh well, first we have Boba Fett being shot again with the lightning if, gun. No, he's who cares. Uh, Palpatine fires the galaxy gun. Yeah, and the galaxy gun is like kind of shit. Didn't like very frequently just doesn't work. I think it has a. There's a dud missile in empires and yeah. in this case it's just like it comes into hyperspace and everyone's able to escape yeah everyone's um, dead no nah, we we saw that shit coming around no i get like like actually the galaxy gun sucks like don't worry <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um we also missed the scene with uh luke and um um uh, they embrace like they don't like they just kind of embrace their feelings 
um, and slow dance. Um, I don't like kiss or anything really. And then it specifically says that Luke heads back to his own. Uh, it says Luke heads back specifically to his own room for the night, basically. So it's like very clear that like they love each other, but. Wait, is this uh, Already, is this but... still issue five? Like, are you talking about? Uh, the... Yeah, they hug in issue five anyway. I don't know. If I'm pretty they sure ha- they're kissing in. Uh, you think one scene? Yeah, Push after the after. I mean, for me, I think it's page twenty-four. One of the last pages, like before the galaxy again. Yeah, where it's after she cuts the. Uh, the remote in half, and then they're... I'm pretty sure they're kissing no. in that. They're not hugging. But look how her head's facing. It's like down towards his chest. Is that down? I think it's up. Yeah, because look at her... No, because look at her, her her ear hole thing. The circle on her head is pointed like... It's a circle. It can't be pointed anywhere. Well, it can because it's an oval. No, it's just know. inconsistently drawn. Look at the back of her head. I don't know. I guess it would make more sense for them to kiss her. I'm just... pretty sure you're looking at Luke's chin and thinking that's her face. You see. They're definitely kissing. Why is this important? It's... I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yes. Uh, okay, so we're on to Alderaan. Talk about uh, it later. <laughs> off the podcast. This is for the Tap Calf After Show. AKA Halo Reach. <laughs> Usually, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Oh, I got an invite to the uh, Halo uh, CE uh, flight today. Oh, well, so congratulations. That should be coming out pretty soon. Brag about it. Anyways, New Alderaan, Dark Empire has chosen to acknowledge the Thrawn trilogy. We get to see oh. Jason and Jaina. Uh, they mm-hmm. look, we never see their faces, crucially. They look really old. They should be one years old. They should be not even no, a year old. No, they're two. No, no. They, they'd be one and Are a half they? or two by now. Uh, I think. Yes. They're born in nine, and this is in ten. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. No matter. We get to see winter as well. My okay, girl, well, we will... know they're at least nine months old. Yeah, and you know, most nine months. Yeah, never mind. I mean, Jason's as big as Han. He's half as large as Han. He's a fucking gigantic lad. <laughs> it's that new Alderaan gravity that doesn't yeah. really compress them. So they don't... Oh, the new Alderaan, yeah. It also allows for some strange rock formations. So something, str- something weird going on in new Alderaan. Um, so the thing about all the rock formations here is that they'd feel more strange if Nesbis and Desucha weren't exactly the same. Yeah, you're not wrong. But... Uh, we talked about how the galaxy gun didn't actually kill anyone. Mm-hmm. Although I do like, I do like that art. The last page is pretty cool. It's just yeah. like, droid. I mean, they, there is a huge fleet around the planet too. Um, yeah. That's probably what contributes to them thinking the, the new Republic's dead, but I guess the Akbar and Mon Mothma just didn't feel the need to tell anyone. Or probably like doing some freaky stuff together Ooh. they're like they're like oh we were an off planet we could just tell that the galaxy gun was coming they're like uh where's the fleet uh, has this <laughs> been the first time that the mon mothma admiral akbar relationship has been shipped oh god no are we starting Wait. a new ship is this going to be the top calf transmission shipping episode i feel like you're really underestimating star wars fans right now and i'm not impressed <laughs> all right um are we ready to move on to issue six? Yes. <clears throat> uh, 
All right. Move us on. So we open up with more not seeing the faces of Jason and Jaina. We're on uh, we're on New Alderaan still, but we Luke get is, to see Luke and Leia getting, or Luke and Cam and Jem and Rafe getting here. Yeah, uh, and Luke is seeing his niece and nephew for the first time. He's wearing gauntlets. He's wearing, I think, the same robe that the Emperor gave him. Uh, it's got a huge collar. It's frankly ridiculous. <laughs> um, what's his name? Um, Jem's brother is wearing a Rafe. literal skull around his. Rafe is wearing a literal skull around his neck. Uh, what are you gonna do? And Cam is a freaky stranger. So this is really a lot to unload on these children. <laughs> well, whenever I go to visit my sister, and I like, I pick up my nephew. <laughs> what I say. Is, Ricky, look, it's your children, healthy and alive. <laughs> it doesn't creep anyone out. Unless with their mother looking as, <laughs> frankly, ghastly as she does. Like, those kids are probably, like, pretty desensitized. They've been, like, sent, they've been sending hollows of their mother back to, like, New Alderaan. <laughs> She's looking more and more like a fucking professional linebacker every day. <laughs> <laughs> Like the scene with her in Winter, I was like, "Oh, where's Winter? There's Leia. Who's this guy?" And then, no, oh, there's think. Leia in the. Just get rid of the hat. Bodyguard it's of just the hat. Okay, if you look at that scene, um, look at the scene with Luke picking up Jaso and or Jaina. Well, it's not and or Jaso or Jaina. Yeah, Han and Leia have literally the exact same posture. The exact, they're doing the same thing with their arms. Just look, it's funny. Oh, that's one other thing I wanted to bring up. And we skipped it from issue two. Uh, as much as I wanted to get through issue two as quick as possible at Damn, the time. Yeah. Uh, gazillion callbacks. Well, there it's just so many things I disliked about that one that I... I Why don't you move sure. on from it, Corey? <laughs> because I can't. Like James Lucina with all these goddamn callbacks. <laughs> nice. Nice. So I'm uh, sorry. I just definitely popped it the mic again there. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, when they're getting accosted by the bounty hunters or whatever, it's like, but not to worry. Han and Leia have a plan for this situation. It's just them shooting the person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like shooting them from under their arm. That was the that was the big twist. It's like, it's like this is the a fucking... plan they've only been able to develop through a half decade of marriage. It's like, we're going to shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> that was the main thing I was thinking. Cause before this, we were talking about uh, like Arrested Development narrator for a lot of <laughs> the scenes. Like you brought it up with the uh, Cam saying you won't regret this. <laughs> they would. <Yeah>. And then <laughs> the the main thing that I was thinking was like, how do they have to plan for these situations? Shooting yeah. the people <laughs> reminds me of um, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Um, with uh, Marcus, have you ever seen Indiana Jones? I forgot you haven't, have you? I've seen two of them. I don't well, remember which two. There's a moment in the Last Crusade where this guy Marcus has, I think it's like, I can't remember. I think he's got a, a map to the Holy Grail, and Indiana Jones, I think, is being um, interrogated by the Nazis, and they're like, Marcus Brody, he's a an expert of all cultures and can speak 10 different languages, he'll disappear and you will never ever be able to find him. And then it cuts to Marcus Brody. He's just like this old, like white dude. And he's like very, he's basically like C-3PO and he's like wandering through this like village in like the middle East. And he's like, hello, can somebody help me? Does anyone speak English? <laughs> it just, it very much reminded me of that where it's like, yeah, they've got a plan and shoot him. Yeah. It's a good plan. I'm not going to lie. It, it was effective. It did it did the job, but I feel like I mean, it was it's, overstated. It's hyper efficient. <laughs> yeah. Hyper efficient. So we get the uh the Avengers assembling there, all the Jedi, all eight of them. And because seven, Vader's castle yeah. looks kind of like Stark's Tower. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> you go in and there's the statue of Vader. Palpatine's just getting there, like, yeah, that asshole Cedrus put that up last week. <laughs> Yeah. What can you do, I guess? 
It's, it is Vader's castle. Like, you got to honor the dude, don't you? It's interesting is I think there is actually other material that that re- recognizes that as Vader's castle. Uh, Jedi Knight does. Um, oh, there you go. Because you go to the um, June. Uh, it's actually Jedi Academy. Specifically. Oh, okay. You go to the June, and it's got it's the it's the really annoying planet with the acid rain, where you gotta like go between ledges while you get shot by the giant obnoxious troopers. That's their official name. Vader, why does he have to be such like an emo kid? Like, I'm really sad. Let's have two bases. They'll both look completely evil, and one will be on a lava planet, the other will be on an acid rain planet. <laughs> like A lava planet where I lost all my limbs. Yeah. Just like, come um, on. He should, got, that, he should get the Coral Vanda on Yeah, just go for a little... Yeah. Do some gambling or, with his bros. I remember in uh, the novelization for episode three it's like palpatine's talking to vader and he's like name something what do you want and i'll give it to you and anakin just as a joke is like this is like palpatine's like getting really close to having him like fully groomed he's like a bag of corsica gems he's like done and he's like okay the corellian brothers and he's like done and anakin's like holy shit like this dude just gave me the corellian system uh, and, <laughs> and in the I end verify that you can actually do that for <laughs> Yeah, I'm the, he's basically just saying, listen, like, was one thing that's really cool about the novelization. He's like, he's getting fucked over by the Jedi at literally every single turn. They don't believe in him. They're like crapping on him. And Palpatine's just like, I will put it all on the line for you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we really need to do yeah. like episode three novelization soon. Yeah, I mean, <clears> we, could, we could do it after this because uh-huh. it'd be Jedi Academy, right? Otherwise? Yeah, I think so. A break. Um, I don't know. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure see. it. Uh, but yeah, but, uh, so something. The level, the Vajun level, can't be as annoying as um, the Narshada level from uh, from from Jedi Outcast. That's that's definitely true. I a died level, so many times on that one. That level is literally hell. It's horrible. Like, it's 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 not even that it's hard. It's like uh, it's hard to the point of being unfun, and some games are hard. But like for example, um, Fallen Order is hard. But if you are good at it, then it's fair, you know. But that level is just like go in the open, you're getting fucking sniped. Yeah, from like it's bullshit. It, it's stuff that you can't really do anything about, and then yeah, I I do not enjoy Narshida in that game. Shit, you you've got to like. And then it's like the end too. It's like the place you've got to go is like hidden. Uh, yeah, I that. So no matter how many times I play that game, that level, I always have to go watch a YouTube video of someone speed running it to know where I'm yeah, supposed to go. Yeah, me too. It is cool that I remember the bartender's bartender's a chiss. Yeah, which is cool. <laughs> He's like one of the only chest that ever shows up outside yeah it's true and it sucks as well because that's like the first level where you get to use your lightsaber and you're like dying to use it and it's like fuck you sniper you, rifle it's like long range sniping and it's just it's it's just literally god awful it's like probably the I would go out of my way to say or not go out of my way I, I would confidently say that it's the worst designed level of any game of that caliber like any game that's like i guess that'd be like a triple a game i think it's the worst designed level in any triple a game i've ever played all right i'd be tentatively willing to go sign that he's all in <laughs> no no that, that's a good, a good way to that's a good way to characterize what it is said but we end up back on new alderaan and ebba Jaos is showing uh, the Asana siblings out of Lift to Rock yeah. and saying yeah. that Yoda taught him how to do that. They're like, hey, yeah, when, we already know how to do that. So uh, it's like, oh, yeah, but now you know you can do it with different sizes. And then Bimba says, oh, yeah, with like, different ages. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> just on a, on a serious note, though, this kind of brings the idea. Like, I think a lot of people thought, based on what we get from Obi Wan, that Yoda taught all Jedi like directly. Yeah. Um. And I mean, the prequels go with that a little bit because, yeah, Yoda did have like a, you know. He's a central figure in all of Jedi education, but he probably wouldn't be the person to teach you to lift rocks. Although, I mean, maybe. Um, because I guess that would be something you learn early on unless you're one of the Horn family males. Yeah, and uh, we didn't really talk about uh, Cam Alasar's father being the Jedi oh, yeah. and teaching him, but mm-hmm. that's just weirdness with how the universe wasn't really established yeah, yet. Just... Yeah. But... Uh... I do like this scene, like this sort of sequence, because it's like the first inklings of a Jedi, what a Jedi Academy would look like. I, I like that too. And it's like the whole, or, like that is the Jedi order right now. And it's like, okay, there is more than one. Like, yeah. It is hard to like, like where's Mara? But like, even if only two of them are ever going to show up again, well, Leia as well, but yeah. Doesn't Vima only show up like literally once? Yeah. I don't even, I don't know what Empire. happens to her. After, like, if she's supposed to have died or just went away. You know how, like, so many, like, Star Wars wiki articles for, like, planets and stuff will be, like, this planet was conquered by the Yuzhan Vong during their invasion because, like, it's just, like, the thing, like, all planets have in common. That's just what happened to Vima. She was just conquered by the Yuzhan Vong. <laughs> Affiliation? Yuzhan Vong. <laughs> they dropped a goddamn moon on her. Well, just because they show up in, like, uh, as a name in an atlas within a little bubble exactly. where the Yuzon Vong invaded. Yep. Exactly. And then we have to yeah. use that as the only text in Throne's Revenge because there's literally <laughs> yeah. nothing else known about it. Just be making shit up. But we do Honestly. get uh, we get some battle meditation. Uh, so I'm thinking that must have... Because I haven't really read the... Um, Oh, what are the other comics called again? The um, Dawn of the Jedi or Tales of the Jedi. Sorry. I haven't really read those. I'm assuming that that's so heavily mentioned because it ties into tales. But like I said, I've never really. Do you know I, if that's the case or not? I believe it is. Um, I don't know if Nomi does it. But it, it's like it's definitely a bigger thing in those. Uh, mm-hmm. And. Like, uh, Ulick does it, I think. Oh, right, because he's got, like, does he, have, does he have a meditation sphere? I forget. Ulick Kaldroma? Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. Eternity Sith? I forget. Because it was those that introduced the meditation <coughs> sphere, wasn't it? Yeah. Usually used for, like, battle meditation, weren't they? Yeah, I just don't remember which era they showed that off in. If it was before or after that, because it might have been one of the earlier Sith Wars. But why I was kind of a little thankful, and that's the one area that will benefit most from a fresh touch. I think mm. is the like pre, like the there's too many goddamn Sith Wars. There's too many. Um, dice. There's Jedi Civil Wars, Sith Wars, like. It's just and it happens like it feels like every few thousand years, and it's just too hard to keep track of it all. Yeah, it's also the area where they're likely to like wholesale include stuff, though, too. Yeah, I mean, and that's fine because like I think like Knights of the Old Republic is unique enough that like it has it stands out and like you kind of understand how like, you know, the Mandalorian wars lead into everything else. But then it's like when you try to keep that in line with like all the stuff that happened before that. And then after that, and it's like, even with the Bane, I think it's like the, the connections are clear enough, but they yeah. just, there's just, they just threw too many wars, like the hyperspace war, like, like all that stuff. I think it's a bit much. Hmm. Um. So Han is gonna go to deep space to send a message to Lando. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're gonna help with the invasion. Luke is dreaming a lot about wrinkles. Uh, 
I don't know if this is implied to be like a just PTSD like, kind of thing, or if this is like actually wrinkles sending him visions or fucking with him from afar. Yeah. Oh, and is that also when uh, Luke says uh, he has a vision where Leia's children will be grown up? I'm like, uh, <laughs> who wants to tell him? <laughs> Some of them will grow up. And- oh no, sorry. That this is their first. Sorry, that's the vision he has later. This is just. Yeah. Right. Well, there this is, is the a special one a special moment with Jem and Luke where Luke's jealous that Han has a family and he has nothing, but they found each other. Their hearts bright with waves of unexpected happiness. The two Jedi become oblivious to everything around them. As silent swift this shadows... exactly what was happening with Luke and Gariel. Like, like, she's not even into him. That's the thing. Luke's just imagining this shit. This is the exact same thing that was happening at that friggin' dinner um, on Bakura with Gariel Captazin. <laughs> no, Jem's into it. Don't, yeah, into it, don't Gariel Jem. That, that's something I do to Charlie. I, I, I should... <laughs> shouldn't gaslight him like that <laughs> you just tell him that Gary L. Captison isn't in name and he's like who's Gary <laughs> uh, scarab droids are coming in to poison them and uh, yeah so we get uh, cuts uh, what's his name in half which is pretty badass uh, Curtis Morty then she blocks a blaster bolt with her hand like Vader. Or, yeah, that's... Wait, is that her that does that? Or, no, never mind. Oh, wait. She oh, yeah, no, blocks mind. a that, blaster that, no, no, bolt that's with, right. her, that's one of the, with her torso. Sorry, that, that's one of the... Yeah, that's one of the... It's hard to tell. <laughs> that's one of the bad guys. <laughs> Justin, she gets shot. I don't think... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I was misreading the, the earlier scenes. <laughs> Actually, this isn't more foreshadowing because she gets pissed off at the remote because she uh, she can't block it. And then mm. she cuts it in half. Then she can't block the blaster from uh, other evil McBad dude that I, I don't care about the it's name not, of. It's not Leia that gets shot. It's uh, Jim. Yeah. I think, I think you said it was... Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that is that is some... Some foreshadowing. Basically, she sucks. And yeah, she she never learned the blocking skill, and then Leia cuts him in half. They could use some of that time canoodling to, uh, you know, learn the force. Maybe she was blocking some different blaster bolts, (laughs) studying the white current, (laughs) charging up that ion can. And and Pontejos also has a built-in lightsaber in his arm, which is pretty metal. It's really just a spork. <laughs> like, look at that picture. It's it's very short. Yeah, I do like the scene with the uh, the three Jedi um, standing down the uh, the dark siders. Yeah, pretty cool. And the Are you ready, Rafe? Yeah, my sister's he's dead. Pretty, he's pretty metal. I like at the end too how they break that. <laughs> His sister is dead. <laughs> They're like, uh, will she be all right? And uh, Vima's like, she will be. Well, her spirit goes on. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> to join the great company of the Jedi. It's like, so is she okay? <laughs> it's like, she's literally smoking. Like, no. <laughs> Smoke is a bad sign. That's, that's her spirit leaving her. So what do you think? Um, then we get the uh, sort of uh, Battle of Crate esque showdown with the Empire. Um, we get like those turrets that come out of the ground. They get they have like. Uh... Also, I think we get mention of that. Don't we get mention of the defenses of? I don't remember if it's New Alderaan in later book, and it's I described believe we kind do. of like this. Oh, is it? It might be Jedi Academy trilogy. Yeah. Because then they, they've also got the nanny droid. Because um, Kevin Anderson does bring in a good amount of the the comic book stuff to yeah. to certain things. Yeah. Is it actually the Dark Nest trilogy? I think it is because I think they're protecting. Um, what's her name? 
Um, Jason's son, daughter. Why am I forgetting her name? Lana. Yeah, I th- I think it's Alana. No, Isn't Alana's Nana? not. Is Alana even born yet in the Dark Nest trilogy? I don't think she's conceived. Isn't she yet. born halfway through? Okay, maybe I think I'm she's wrong. maybe she's conceived and then not at the end. Because there's five years between, and I guess, is she nine by? Plenty of Falcon, Afraid of the Jedi. Like she's fairly old. Yeah, maybe. God, I really need to reread that. I've got the timeline on her really <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. It's also kind of weird with her because, like, Tenokot is that thing where uh, she's pregnant for a really long time with the Force. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Han and Leia speculate about how ugly the dad must be if they're not telling anyone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that nanny droid defense thing is the three lock, three rock planetoid Anakin was hidden on. Daigo says, I don't really remember that. I used to remember there's a scene where the turrets come out of the ground and anyway, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. There's, it's just like, so, I've just read so much shit. Like it all starts to blend together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like so many repeated like ideas and stuff too. So especially when you're just going to certain books for like a few passages, and it just gets, yeah yeah it all it's hard to remember where stuff is from or what it was referencing mm-hmm. uh, anyway but yeah the, the battle is kind of crate esque because they've got advanced walkers moving on the position they've got like a little force hiding out they're running off into the caves and then uh the falcon and some other ships come in and basically uh clear out the way mm-hmm. so maybe a little more the uh they're going for hoth Thing? Yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. I mean, it, obviously they weren't going for crate, but was, well, I, don't know. I wasn't suggesting they. Or I wasn't suggesting that you were suggesting that they were time traveling, but I think it's just as similar to Hoth as crate there. I guess I just saw the retreating into the caves and the big guns, but yeah, I think you're right. Um, in Jedi Academy. The, oh, yeah, they, they fight the spider droids. That's right. Okay, so it is Jedi Academy, right? Um. Remember that? They got like the weird droids yeah. that can like Yeah. Um so the Alliance survives. Akbar and Mothma and seemingly a bunch of them are there. Literally uh, no one Elmer... important uh, like Yeah. Huh. The destruction of the base had no uh, Sorry, 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 hold on. Is this podcast boring you, Corey? Yeah. <laughs> it's Just not boring you? I have a good time talking with my uh, very good friend, Corey. Oh, who's that? Oh, shit. I'm sorry. You know what? Uh, this is a video I never thought I'd have to make, but um, there have been some allegations that I was bored on the podcast. Uh, I had had a long day beforehand. I was sick, and I still, I still, when sick, made sure that I could talk with my good friend Justin about Star Wars Dark Empire 2. And... One of the darkest of empires. Star Wars The Fifty Shades of Grey Empire. So I apologize if part of my sickness... And I yawn regularly throughout the episodes as the person who is brave enough to use face cam. Because we, we record rather late. And I'm old. Oh, it's actually later for me, and I am just as old as you are. And you have a kid, so I don't know. But you, you my don't wife use face cam. was sick today. You don't use um, face cam, so how are we supposed to know if you're yawning or not? Can we not fucking cancel me, please? You, you okay? started it. You started I it. I can't handle it. All right, we're at the very end. We got the scene where uh, Luke sees um, the three solo children, not knowing that uh, one of them will die to the Yuzhan Vong, and uh, one of them will kill the other. And so, not one really. Other one goes on to become the matriarch of some uh, new empire. So, uh, really, batting a thousand there, Leia. 
a great job, Leia. You probably should have just not. Actually, the one on the right there, who I assume is Anakin, uh, that might actually be Lobaka. Oh. If you look okay. closely. Yeah, I mean, I don't see any distinguishing feature, like anything that separates the hair and the rest of the face. Yeah, they don't look especially human. So maybe what we're seeing there is actually, like middle is unmistakably Jaina. That's clear. Oh. So that's Jaina, Lobaka, and Kent Hamner. <laughs> wow. Kent Hamner pre Saba. Obviously, he's standing and not a broken mess on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> he's just fallen off a catwalk because he was murdered by Saba. God damn, that's the third time I've uh, topped out this mic this episode. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It. I'm sorry. Clearly, you're just um, getting too excited. A little bit, and then um, we get the uh, the scene of R2 and C3PO. And let me just say, C3PO's got a carriage on him. I don't want to undercut that that beautiful sentiment there. No, no, I want to hear your opinion on it before you move on. Uh, on 3PO's carriage. Yeah. Uh, that haft. But. You're trying to perform your protocol duties, but your big ass just keeps <laughs> clanking. <laughs> He's the original clanker. Yeah. The, the page before that, the scene with. Uh, all the Jedi are looking at the uh, the Sith War engraving, and then Luke is lamenting that the Jedi have been struggling with the dark side for aeons. So many have died, and now I have lost another. I wish I could have saved her, Rafe. And then Rafe has to console Luke on his yeah, sister's well, you, death. You like, knew her for 20 minutes. Yeah, like, can we stop just buying into Luke's pity party all the time? Can we be here for Rafe right now, please? I'll say as a uh, from Anakin though that's a pretty metal place to be born. I thought about the fact that Empatejo's brand is like just feet away from the room where Anakin is being birthed. <laughs> I'm gonna be thinking about that when I read Star by Star in 2026. Are you? Yeah, I will. That Empatejo's brand is that close. Not only in Potajeo's brand, but the whole crew. Cam Solusar was there. That's Where were of, you when Anakin Have you ever thought about that before? Born. One of the first people to see Anakin Solo. I I can't say that I've ever cared before. Can you? It's if you think about it, that's like it's like been or it's what fifteen years until that happens. Like that's a. That's a long time. <laughs> There's a lot of, I, I lot of bantam in here. <laughs> I love that. A lot of bantam crammed in there. <laughs> I love that it seems like Han and Leia hadn't actually discussed what they were going to name Anakin beforehand. I know. And Han is like, we're calling him Han Solo Jr. And then Leia's like, no, don't be ridiculous. We're naming him after my evil, murderous Hitler father. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. Like, okay. To be fair... Jaina was Han's mom, right? Or I don't know. Isn't? I don't know who they were named after, if anyone. I'm sure, Jaina is Han's mom. Hello, parents. Ash, and his he and his wife Jaina died when Han was young. All right. I don't know who Jason is. Um, obviously, Harris and Dula's uh, son. Yeah, he's named after his new canon self. <laughs> Chat, does anyone know who, wh who's Jason? Um, but yeah, Anakin. Anakin really was the best of all three of them, wasn't he? Uh, no. I think as a character, like he was definitely oh, the strongest. No, no, no. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like he was like the uh, the Uber Jedi. He was the OP one, yeah. That's why he uh, had to be nerfed. Nerfed hard. 
They they fixed an issue of... where Anakin was going to kill everyone in the galaxy. Um, what do you th- what do you think about how this? I mean, this is as good a time as any. This is the first time we've had the entire Solo family together. Um, what do you think about them killing Anakin and Jason? About like two like tearing the family apart that much? Should they have done both? Um, hmm. like I know there's a lot of people who are just like, if you're gonna kill Jason, like, why Anakin as well? And I, I kind of get that. Cause I, I feel frustrated sometimes too. I, I don't know. I feel like everything we got out of what happened to the Solo family the was some of the best character just... writing we've gotten out of Star Wars. Yeah. So, I, like, yeah. I would have preferred, ultimately, that Jason doesn't go to the dark side. Or if he does go to the dark side, doesn't go, like, full Cadis like he did. But that also ended up being my favorite character arc because of everything that went into it. Yeah. And part of that does come from, like, part of what makes that impactful is that, uh, and possibly even makes that possible, is that Anakin had died before. And so you see how all four of them kind of deal with that and deal with right. not wanting the galaxy to be that way again. Mm-hmm. So Jaina kind of goes dark side for a bit, but she just gets like kind of violent and gets like true Jedi way, sword of the Jedi. This is who I am. That's what I'm doing. Jason looks yeah. for like any alternative path to learn something that the Jedi didn't that, um, uh, that could stop people from, ending up like his grandfather and that's ultimately what leads him to become like his grandfather and then han you see how he deals with chewbacca and and anakin and Mm -hmm. how he kind of cuts himself off from his family and leia just tries to hold everything and (laughs) the one mother who tries to hold it all together but i but that's where you get a lot of the uh point where certain pre-existing Star Wars fans kind of wanted to get off too because it was that much darker situation Mm -hmm. Uh, so I understand why it's controversial but Mm -hmm. for me that was a big part of what got and kept me in Star Wars the way I was so I mean there those are especially the Caius thing is a very late EU point for a lot of people like that was past the glory days for a lot of people so Mm -hmm. Uh, everyone but i mean i think a lot of people kind of were more even if they were still into the eu i think by that point there was a lot more like you know old republic stuff being offered and it was like clone wars and stuff yeah or i guess yeah so yeah um i think I don't know. It, it's it's sad though. But like, Anakin is the most Anakin is the most interesting individual to me. But I think Jason and Jaina's together are more interesting than him. Like the twin dynamic is cool. Yeah, um, I've never really found Anakin to be an especially interesting character though. I don't think his character is interesting. I just think like his kind of de- like his destiny and stuff mm. is interesting. <coughs> um, his weird like, powers he's like, that he always has, like selfless. Like he's. He, you know, he's like a 15 year old kid who's like literally probably if like he just got a girlfriend and he killed himself. Well, he lets himself die. Like, you know, it's pretty. He does get one of the best death scenes of anyone in Star Wars, too. He does have a good one. Yeah. Um, I, I really a... can't wait to get to Star by Star. That is going to be so good. Good, too. I, I think we pretty much covered everything. Do you want to? Uh, someone said there's a new Clone Wars season seven trailer. I want to watch that. So, do you want to? Um, yeah. So we just got uh, we got two emails. Is that what you said? Email. You... I'm not uh, sure if yeah. I'm yeah, emails. Uh, oh, actually, we got a few other emails as well. But uh, I'll try to open it as well, and I can maybe read it. Uh, so our first email from Hans. Uh, I can read it since your voice yeah, is fucked. Yeah, if you don't mind. 
Um, now that we're on the topic of Reborn Emperors, how does the return of Palpatine compare to Vitiate Valkorian and how he's brought back from dead? Uh, do you think Vitiate was too OP? I mean, they're different because from what I remember, and that's I think this is the same for you, Corey, but that's really not my area of like lore expertise. I was never into the old republic. Um but I guess there's just different techniques. Cause doesn't Vitiate mostly like absorb like energy and stuff? Isn't that how he kind of stays around? Yeah, Vitiate, I really don't know much about him. I basically just know what I got from watching the trailers for or the cinematics for um for Tor. So I don't really have anything that I can really say about him. Yeah, I mean, he lives for thousands of years, from what I remember correctly. Yeah, uh, I do I think he's really too like, OP. Yeah, I don't like how they um, retconned some of like the Revan stuff to be like Vitiate being responsible for it. I like I prefer Revan and Malak to kind of be self directed. Um, I think that's much more interesting than having like um, some like dark evil emperor uh, yeah. manipulating them. Uh, uh, thanks for the question. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Daigo's Fish is asking if there's going to be chat questions as well. If you guys want to tag uh, at Corey's data pad here so it's a bit easier for me to see them, we'll take a couple. I don't know. If there's a bunch, we might not be able to get to all of them because I I think I'm going to be incapable of talking soon. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so if you just want to tag us, uh, tag me so I can actually see it. Um, and he's dying. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Our next question... It's from Justin. Oh, here, 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 this is a very up. long one, yes. Um, so he's talking about how the Dark Empire... Thank you, Justin, for the email. Uh, this is the second or third one. Um, so Dark Empire and Thrawn represent two different directions. How do you think the Legends EU broadly would have looked and would have looked if the Dark Empire approach was taken? Uh, would we have still gotten story arcs like the you hear on the Long War and Second Galactic Civil War? Uh, or just Palpatine returning over and over again in the 40k levels of escalation? I mean, that's a good question because there definitely is a different tone to the universe this way. Uh, it's more distinct from the original trilogy than the Theron trilogy. Um, I think the E would have been much less popular. I think that it's hard, I can't really tell whether we would have gotten um, stuff like the Second Galactic Civil War, but I think we would have gotten a trilogy like the Jedi Academy trilogy after this because Empire's End really sets that up. I mean, all, all, all three of the... Uh, the end of all three of the uh, comics set up the kind of foundation for a new Jedi order. Um, the first, like the end of dark empire one is like Luke wanting to the end of dark empire two is like Luke's on his way. And then we get kind of more of that in empire's end. Um, other than that, it's hard to tell, but I think tonally it might've been different. Um, I would even go as far as saying that if dark empire had been kind of the tone of the, uh, had one out for the tone of the expanded universe, there's a good chance that it wouldn't have survived as like a unified thing past the 90s. Uh, it's entirely possible that Bantam or Del Rey or whoever would have gotten a book license afterwards. But I feel like kind of like how Marvel was kind of pushed to the side. Uh, if Dark Empire had been like the dominant one, we would have kind of gotten a soft reboot a lot earlier. Surprised. Uh, yeah. that's just kind of my, my take on that. Cause, uh, like I really did enjoy Dark Empire one. I think people have probably picked up my opinion of Dark Empire two has not been as high. Uh, mm -hmm. but I do think even for the parts that I did like there, it's very much a nineties thing. So it would have been a huge tonal shift between, uh, that and what would have had to come next. So... Even there was a there was a big shift between Bantam and Delray, but it wasn't quite to the same extent. It was more what risks they were willing to take or not going from the end of the Bantam era into the New Jedi Order. Uh, and I think it would have been an even bigger digression and they would have wanted to uh, redo whatever had happened with the characters after and or it would have been probably a reboot similar to the level that we saw with the Disney buyout. Yeah, I mean, the Thrawn trilogy is a lot more timeless than Dark Empire, so... It, it, it's also possible that had this been the uh, focal point, we just wouldn't have had a strong EU. Um, and then maybe even like when Disney did the wipe, maybe then the EU still wouldn't have been as big a focus. It's really, it's really hard to say. Yeah. Um, 
I think next we have, did you guys, that we've got Die Ghost Fish. Uh, did you guys know that most of Nar Shaddaa, Kashub, and Anne Crispin's Han Solo trilogy? I think I was aware of that, but I've only read that once. Uh, he said that would be an interesting diversion after Empire's End. So we'll put that in the pile for consideration. Um, do we have any more emails, Corey, that you want to uh, get to? There's two in the promotions tab, if you want to look at that. The first one here is from Joel Davis. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll read it. I, I got this. I, okay, you got I'm going to just run my voice right into the ground. If, right. May as well. I'm curious, despite what you guys might feel about Episode Nine, do you think that Lucasfilm will try to assimilate this Resurrection of Palpatine story into the larger canon and not more or less ignore it like Dark Empire was? If so, what are certain things from Palpatine's canon Resurrection that you would like to see explored, such as how he might have brought himself back into the Sith Eternal Cult, Expansion, Lower Exegol, etc.? Thanks for taking my question. I think a big part of that, uh, a big part of why the Resurrection was ignored beforehand uh, and like the lead up to it was just because a lot of that ground had already been done. Uh, so like the Thrawn trilogy had already been written and Timothy Zahn specifically didn't want to deal with Dark Empire. Uh, so especially with it being a movie thing now uh, and uh, with the kind of stuff we got in the Rise of Skywalker visual addiction, I think there are much more... Uh, and it, it's a much more open space, a 30-year-long uh, period... There's a lot more room to tell those stories, so I think it'll definitely happen. Uh, I mean, it, you're right. It is a different situation. I do think one thing that's sort of... There, there are a few similarities, though, and one I will say is we kind of got a hint from Pablo Hidalgo, who's got a private Twitter feed, but which I, I'm, not, I, I'm not given the privilege of following him, but he's got a private Twitter feed, but someone screenshotted this. He basically hinted at the fact that certain elements of the expanded universe have been written. The new EU have been written with the presumption that Colin Trevorrow's episode nine would be the eventual conclusion to the sequel trilogy. So for example, he talked about the fact that Coruscant hasn't been a thing in the new EU because it was basically going to be this, the, uh, the main setting for most of episode nine. So one thing that episode, the version we did get has going against it is the fact that, a lot of the EU wasn't really set up to be as well integrated with it as it could have been. Um, mm. How will Palpatine's... And I'm kind of of the opinion, and I think you might have mentioned this too, Corey, that I don't think they're going to touch after Episode Nine for a while. Um, so any integration with stuff like that will have to happen beforehand. There's been rumors that like the new Project Luminous will deal with stuff in the Unknown Regions and like sith gods and stuff so that could tie in pretty heavily that's certainly in the ballpark of exegol so that could tie in with the resurrection episode nine but i do think there's going to be a struggle because of how kind of abrupt palpatine's return was um but yeah good question uh... um, the, the other promotions tab email is mostly something just for us saying yeah just Fucked up an issue more, with, I think. You know, to look into so, that. Thank Other you, Rick. That, we'll I, take a look into that. But yeah, yeah. Thank you, Rick. I think that's basically it. Um, I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, let's just do general thoughts, I guess. Um, for me, this ironically has some of the same issues that the sequel trilogy has for me. Um, it doesn't feel like Episode One, or sorry, Dark Empire One and Dark Empire Two were written with a greater with an overall trajectory in mind like dark empire 2 just feels tacked on to dark empire 1 um mm -hmm. because dark empire 1 feels like it could be a closed story much of dark empire 2 is basically retrotting the same ground or um like there's not really a lot of plot threads that are picked up like for example we see sorry we see luke destroy most of the cloning chambers um but then in dark empire 2 it's like well we've got more um we have this interesting arc with Nar Shaddaa Dark Empire 1 where we meet Vima. Dark Empire 2 is like, well, we're actually going to go back and find her again. Uh, same with the Boba Fett stuff. Uh, I guess the pregnancy stuff is sort of brought up, but Dark Empire 1 was certainly written like it could be a standalone, I think. Mm -hmm. and I think Dark Empire 2, and we'll probably see the same thing with Empire End, sort of suffer because they're not, they don't feel like a cohesive narrative. And I mean, that's the complaint that I've had with the sequel trilogy and a lot of people have had. You can tell that each one is written sort of independently. 
Uh, unlike something like the Thrawn trilogy, which they sp- you know they sprinkle hints of what's going to happen at the end of book three from the very first pages, um, and that's what makes like a truly truly great uh, piece of Star Wars media for me at least. Um, yeah, and ultimately the OT has the same problems, but yeah, that's my thought on the uh, the comic. Yeah, and I I think uh, I kind of echo you a bit there, but the like. Where Dark Empire won, uh, even though I don't love it, it it's more it it basically is these two comics kind of encapsulate my thoughts about Rise of Skywalker as well. Where Dark Empire one was kind of like all the stuff I liked about it, even if I didn't love every element of it, it had the the elements of it that I liked um, for similar reasons. Where there's even if I don't agree with all the overall choices there's some cool execution with it uh some cool moments but then there's also a bunch of moments that i don't like and that's basically dark empire 2 where all of dark empire 2 kind of feels disposable except for anakin's birth um the characters they introduce like gem's dead already uh we know emmajeos is gonna die and rafe is gonna die if you haven't read the other ones sorry it's happening uh, Anakin's here though, and Cam is here. But the thing is, Cam really wasn't introduced here, so even he's kind of. I'm yeah. not gonna. It's a good point. Give that to it, and like as you said, Vima, we meet again, but we already met her. A lot of the action scenes are fucking Boba, and who cares about that? Or the raid on Biss, which went nowhere. Like literally, nothing came of that. Nothing came of the droids from Balmora. The raid on Biss was pointless. We got to see the Chrysalis Beast, but who cares? Palpatine did nothing. The galaxy gun blew up a planet, but no one was on it. Like, nothing good. happens in Dark Empire 2. That's a really good point, yeah. You're right, it, it's it's just kind of a... Like, you can give Dark Empire 1 a lot of credit for being... um, And, like, just how kind of bold it is. Yeah. Um, but you can't make the same argument for Dark Empire 2 and Empire's End, um, especially because it's really just more. We get a second Eclipse Super Star Destroyer. We get, you know, like Dark Empire 1 introduces so many things. We get the World Devastators. We get the Super Star Destroyers. I mean, yeah, you can you can complain about overuse of super weapons. That's very valid. But, like, when you have all that stuff combined with Palpatine returning, like, that's a lot of interesting concepts whether they work for you or not, you have to admit that's a lot of interesting concepts brought in. Um, and honestly, so. if you just have Dark Empire 1, then you're getting the Eclipse and you're getting the World Devastators. So I wouldn't even, I probably wouldn't even consider it overuse of superpowers at that point, or super weapons at that point. I would have just thought, like, this is these collection of super weapons that have been built up. But it's like, no, those got destroyed. Here's some more. Uh, no, e- exactly. And then and, we get yeah. the Galaxy Gun is a bit much. And. The Galaxy Gun yeah, so, and uh, Eclipse 2 and everything that all explodes in a Rube Goldberg machine of R2 doing the exact same stuff that he did with the World Devastators. Like, there's nothing really new that happens between Dark Empire 2 and Empire's End. So we get the issue of Palpatine clones, which is already, like, Palpatine coming back from the death is already criticized when it happens once, but it happens what three total times um or yeah he like he comes back multiple times um because he, he's killed on the eclipse he dies of old age uh, in dark empire one and then he comes back from his death on endor so it's like he keeps coming back and like that theme by the time we get to dark empire three is just like like it's just not as interesting as it was before um so th- they had to do something to kind of connect with dark empire one i think but also ramp it up um i don't really know they didn't they they didn't successfully do that i don't think yeah and actually i i would have preferred that's an area where i would have preferred if they kept one palpatine but they did basically the rise of skywalker thing where he's like constantly decrepifying and then recrepifying yeah exactly where that was that was one of my favorite parts of that movie just that effect on palpatine I thought that was Tandy visually stuff. really cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. No, I agree. 
Um, the one thing I do like, I do like the uh, the the executor uh, said dress, and I like that the dark Jedi is kind of cool. I don't like Palpatine gifting the dark side to people. I think that's yeah. pretty lame. Um, but the like Cedrus is kind of cool. Like some of the Belmora stuff is cool, I guess, but like it's never used again. So that kind of makes it. It's and yeah, I, I think we've made our point without. Yeah, it, so. well, it just uh, it it the the biggest thing that you kind of get from it is that it makes not just the super weapons, not just the dark Jedi, but Palpatine himself disposable. Where, like you know he's gonna die and then who cares because we know he's just gonna come back and then he's almost like stops feeling threatening like to where there's secret cloning chambers and stuff because like we see luke kill all but one of the clones so you're like okay this is the the last time and you have like the threat of like okay he's constantly decaying and he's only got so many left so it's like yeah you're right he feels like a a beatable enemy but and then it's just like nah he's got more yeah He's again, but yeah, that those. I really just feel like Dark Empire would have been better without Dark Empire too. So, as much as I, I, I don't like being negative on the show, but I, I feel like this is something where it was just yeah, just like what they did before, and kind of cheapening it when they did it. I didn't remember disliking this this much, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I I dislike this a lot more than I expected to. Mm-hmm. All right, well, happy note that, to end on there. Yeah, we've got a new uh, Clone Wars trailer to watch. It's uh, pretty. How long is it? Uh, not super long, a, a minute or so. But yeah, Clone Wars coming soon. Lots of exciting stuff for Star Wars fans. Um, yeah, looks like some cool space battles. Maybe we'll talk about that at the beginning of next episode. And I just want to point out that we talked about cutting out the like the extra segments that we normally do just to make sure that uh, it went a little bit shorter. And this is one of the longer episodes, I think, even with that. All right, let's end it now then. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, just a reminder, you can email us any questions at tapcaftransmissions at gmail.com. That's T-A-P-C-A-F transmissions. And you can follow our new Twitter account, you do it right now you can probably be one of the first 100 or so very cool uh yeah that's all i've got for you guys want to say goodbye Corey. goodbye Corey. bye Corey. <laughs>